Scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank I tell you, there's, there's no such thing as SS. Believe me. It's a lie. See, that a doctor said it. I'm not against doctors. They are practicing. They are practicing practicing when we say you are practicing what does that mean that means you don't have all the answers they are practicing there's no such thing as ss if you are not whole there is a spirit making it so if you sit down just saying i'm okay no machine called this ss you are watching it right before you this is witchcraft there's no such thing i don't believe it we have doctors see doctors all around but i don't believe it just believe me you must you don't fight people but you must contend for a higher spiritual reality that's the only way you can dominate the limitations of this realm i say it again there is no such thing as ss and i minister right now i stretch my hands anyone here with any blood disease please pay attention to what i'm saying anyone here under the sound of my voice with any blood disease whether you are aware or not right now in the name of jesus i arrest that spirit wherever it is i'm not asking you to come out wherever you are in the name that is above all names i arrest that spirit wherever it is there are at least three people with this blood disease it's like a curse in your family wherever they are oh god in the name of jesus christ I arrest that spirit we call it in medicine SS or AS or whatever it is but we are changing it right now we are changing it right now by the influence of the Spirit of God inside and outside anyone who is a victim of that kind of thing let it be changed right now father hold my hands I bring you healing in the name of Jesus right now by the power of the Holy Spirit be healed of that demonic thing in the name of Jesus I use both of you as a point of contact to your families hallelujah goodness I have to preach bring the lady that shouts under the anointing outside I'm seeing an angel of the Lord touching a lady outside a mighty shout Please bring her inside right now. I want to talk to her. Break every chain. 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 Break every chain.
the Lord has been doing a great work in your life but one of the things that the Lord is doing in this season is he's cutting away altars this is what is happening in your life and in your family he's breaking them up your coming to koinonia is causing a serious catastrophe in the gates of hell concerning your family and i pray for you god will begin to give you dreams all kinds of strange dreams encounters with angels supernatural encounters encounters in the spirit I agree with you and I take authority over everything that does not name the name of Christ. Let it live your life and let it go forever in the name of Jesus. Listen, let me tell you something. Whether a service is a miracle service or not, it doesn't matter as far as God is concerned. For as long as there is something in your life that stops you from enjoying the blessings of the kingdom, it must come under attack. Are we together now? We can't say wait until i know that i have a teaching session but you see let me tell you something it is our desire that every time you come here you have an encounter with god hallelujah i'm seen like a bird jumping out of people this is strange just allow me to do my madness for a few minutes this is like a spirit leaving people from their stomach just flying out i'm seeing at least five people that this is happening to severely right now at least five people five people that this is happening to five people something just jumping out like a bird that's what i'm seeing in the spirit let it go let it go in the name that is above all names let it go right now like a bird is leaving causing pain and destruction I command it to leave right now in the name of Jesus Christ for one that's what has been causing an infection I see like an infection but it goes right now by the power of the Holy Spirit it must leave your body forever Hallelujah Please sit down. Let's get to the business of the night. This atmosphere is already stirred. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 1. Last week, we began looking at the subject of the unity of the faith. We began to explore the body of Christ, the ecclesia. And we started to examine why we've not been able to attain that position of unity in the body of Christ. Why divisions, why seditions and all kinds of things. And um, the Lord granted us the opportunity to look extensively. I first and foremost began last week by talking about the concept of divine patterns. How that no man is at liberty to choose the method of his pursuit towards spiritual progress. There's no such thing as guessing your way around. There is a blueprint. Are we together now? And then it's expected that everyone... Who aligns to God will follow his predefined blueprint. That means there is a way to seek God such that you will find him. There is a way to become a Christian and to live out your Christian experience such that it becomes fruitful. Anything outside that pathway will lead to error, will lead to apostasy, and will lead to a barren Christian life. And we began to examine the concept of divine patterns. There is a way you build ministry. You don't build it the way you want. There is a pattern. There is a way you build business. You don't build it the way you want. There is a way you build family. And so the first assignment of every believer who wants to make progress in the spirit is not just to begin to move carelessly, 
but through the illumination of the word of god to search out right the pathways in the spirit that have been earmarked for the delivery of certain kinds of spiritual results if you want the anointing in the spirit there is a pathway that leads to the anointing if you want increase in ministry there is a pathway if you want to walk in financial prosperity there is a pathway the problem with our generation is that we have we are so intellectual and scientific we guess our way around the things that only the word of god can give us information about jesus said i am the way not a way hallelujah the bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man scientifically intellectually he says but the end thereof are the ways of death so one of the things that staying under the presence of god does for a christian is that it helps you to cut away all these options you have and guides you to the path that path of righteousness right where you begin to live out in accordance you are no longer a rebel to the principles of the kingdom then you come at peace with creation and everything begins to um, compel on common consistent results in your life praise the Lord so we spoke about divine patterns and um, we rounded off last week discussing three great errors remember three great errors that have crippled the body of christ and um, has fought god's agenda of seeing the church coming to that point the bible calls the unity of faith error number one is apostasy a deviation from the patterns of god a deviation from the truth and i told you that there are two dimensions of apostasy the vessel communicating that apostasy, that deviation, that error can be false and of the devil. Never of God in the first place. Or the individual can be of God but his doctrine is not of God. Are we together now? The Bible talked about a man in the Bible called Demas. Demas was once in the faith but he fell out of the faith and began to communicate things that were not of God. Balaam, the Bible warns in the book of Revelation of the doctrine of Balaam. Balaam was a true prophet, right? But then there was a progression. It was first an error of Balaam. Then it was a way of Balaam. Then it was a doctrine of Balaam. It started as a mistake. Then it became a pathway to guide others to follow. And then it became a doctrine. The Bible talks about the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which I hate. All of these are fabrications from the pit of hell. Many of them... Uh, they were initiated by sincere people with sincere desires but because they guessed their own pathway see the danger when sincerity mixes with error it becomes apostasy because you have passion but your pathway is wrong are we together so someone wants to see breakthrough in their family sincere heart then they go to a herbalist a wrong pathway and then it produces a deviation from God's pattern with severe consequences. So the first error is the error of apostasy. There are many doctrines being taught in church. Many of them have been older than every one of us here. But the foundation of those doctrines are from the pit of hell. The Bible says doctrines of demons. Doctrines of demons. People have gone for prayer and fasting gone to several places and not navigating the pathway of the spirit properly they have accessed strange ideas from spirits that a thing is supernatural does not mean is of god supernatural just means outside of the three-dimensional realm there are spheres that influence us beyond the scope of the three-dimensional realm and chances are that anything you see that is superhuman you suddenly call it godly it may be divine in that it is of a force that is greater than that of humans is supernatural being that is outside of the scope of man's reason but that does not mean it is of god the apostle said there is as it were many voices and none of them is without effect so that you are having encounters that are extra physical or beyond the physical realm does not mean these encounters are of god apostasy number two indifference 
That was the second error we considered. How that there are people in the body of Christ whose scope of passion is not kingdom. The scope of their passion is not, um, is not holistic. Once an error in the body of Christ does not affect their immediate environment, they are not concerned. Are we together now? Is 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 the error of indifference. So they are so conscious of their ego, they do not have the courage to confront certain things that have the capacity to destroy the body for as long as it has not affected them in person. They are the kinds who will give an a, a testimony like praise the Lord. I was coming in a car with 30 people and there was an accident. But only because I hold Papa's Bible, every other person died, only me, the God of A and B and C, and people clap about it. Not minding that other believers died, which has impeded the capacity for kingdom acceleration. So the, the scope of their pursuit of God is biased, self-centered. Once a thing does not affect them directly, that was the attitude of Esther when she got to the throne. As against that of Mordecai. Mordecai was a gatekeeper with a passion for the salvation of Israel. Are we together now? And God took Esther, Hadassah, to the throne. The purpose was so that she would be a source of influence to rebuke that which Haman was plotting against the nation of Israel. But when she got there, she became carried away by the bounties of royalty. And then... Haman was there plotting the destruction of the nation of Israel. And Mordecai sent her a message. And for a while, she would not pay attention. And this is what Mordecai said. Don't you think? Number one, they don't even know you are a Jew hanging in that palace. Because when they know, they will hang you and kill you in a shameful way. A woman gave chance for you to come here called Vashti. And now God brought you there and you have lost that kingdom view. Of your purpose of being in the palace so because you are now enjoying the royalties of the palace you do not care if your people die listen if you want to become an effective christian an effective minister your scope must expand beyond the horizon of your ministry and koinonia to think kingdom you must sustain an ability to receive the burden of the corporate church and not just your individual sphere. Now, for the purpose of organization and loyalty, you'll be loyal to whatever God has committed, the ministry, whatever it is he has given you. However, your concern must transcend your personal comfort into seeing that the body of Christ is making progress. No matter how Koinonia is advancing as a ministry, if the body of Christ in Zaria if the body of Christ in the north is not making progress, if the body of Christ in Nigeria is not making progress, we are not making the kind of kingdom impact God desires. Are we together? As a ministry, we may be doing well. This is the reason why we travel from region to region, spending our lives, stretching ourselves. We are doing well as a ministry. But how about the body of Christ? That they too may know him so we go to other regions and inconvenience ourselves to make sure that we open them up to the perspectives of God that has been communicated to us and contribute our quota to strengthening the body of Christ within that territory hallelujah are we together now and this is one of the 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 proofs of a true apostolic ministry the scope of the impact of an apostolic ministry is beyond the platform that is committed to them they they oversee the spiritual progress of a territory not just a ministry hallelujah so if there is a spirit that the devil is bringing over our territory to cause the church to be lukewarm or to begin to cause a particular trait and a manifestation of darkness it is the role of the apostolic and the prophetic ministry to see beyond even if it has not affected koinonia yet we see it and stay it far off and keep the environment conducive for the advancement of the kingdom to take place. Indifference. There are so many people who will never come out. You ask them, um, what is your position on 
high thing for instance and um, because they are in the presence of somebody who does not believe in tithing they will not want to spoil that relationship by saying tithing is of god but then they they have their convictions but to be outspoken about the truth they do not want it because they are afraid of losing members are we together they are afraid of losing all kinds of things a man comes to sow one billion into your ministry and you know it's drug money but then because you need the money you would compromise on that chance to show how addicted you are to the precepts of the kingdom are we together now and you collect the drug money and not have the courage to confront him and say no 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 we need money in this ministry but this is we are not this desperate it must be according to the patterns of god and then the last error that has destroyed the body of christ is exaggerated confrontation of apostasy you see the balance now so the first error is apostasy a deviation from the truth the second error is indifference we don't know where you are standing neither here nor there men with no convictions they are not outspoken about anything they are confident about and then number three are those who are cynical and they hate the body of christ they have contributed to causing more pain in the body than victory exaggerated confrontation they are already people who are sadist they have a negative perception about the body are we together now and so anything that happens in the body they interpret it from the lens of jealousy and envy so even when they are communicating what is supposed to be true the foundation upon which that communication is predicated upon is wrong self-centered and biased so for instance if they are trying to say something like um we caught my man with a charm as a man of god we caught him in the meeting i saw him rubbing one powder quickly they take on that case study because they have a bias for the supernatural by default are we together now it's just that they do not have enough fact and figures to convince people to leave the supernatural so when they lay hold on something they capitalize on that one exceptional case and it becomes a foundation of their proposing what is supposed to be a corrective measure but it's a communication of error are we together someone can watch what just happened here now this manifestation of the anointing and be uncomfortable with it are we together now and then go to a church where he sees a man of god holding somebody's head and turning the head around and use that singular case to mean anytime you are ministering to people under the anointing is an error no sir you see true correction must come from a standpoint of love anything outside of the scope of love is jealousy is bitter envy are we together so those who help in deviating the body of christ from the precepts of god those who are indifferent about it because of their self-centeredness and then those who in a bid to supposedly bring correction let me tell you something please look up i say this with every sense of humility not every man of god is authorized to correct the body of christ read your bible you don't just stand up and think because you have something to say there is there is a throne there is an authorization like a spiritual pass that is given unto people by election of grace that authorizes them to be able to define the boundaries of the spiritual operation of the body of christ it's not just because you have a mic and you have people listening to you you come and stand with all kinds of misguided perspectives and now begin to communicate truths that are limited by your own spiritual perception hallelujah so let's take it from there and um we'll touch on a few things and pray hallelujah revelation chapter one amen and amen and amen are you blessed verse 12 we'll read from 12 to 15 revelation chapter 1 12 to 15 there are a few thoughts maybe about four of them i will share with you on the body of christ and then we will pray okay 
and i turned to see the voice this is john the beloved when he was caught in the isle of patmos and i turned to see the voice that spake with me and being turned i saw what seven golden candlesticks or lampstands next verse and in the midst of the seven candlesticks one like unto the son of man clothed with a garment down to the foot and gird about the paths with a golden girdle let's just stop there really the remaining is just a description listen where was the son of man found in the midst of the seven lampstands and those seven lampstands john himself interpreted it that the seven lampstands represent the catholic church not roman catholic the word catholic means the universal church the ecclesia are we together now god's body the very body of christ this is a powerful revelation because regardless please listen regardless of the error and the confusion and now i know that there's a lot of that regardless of the scandals that break out here and there in church among men of god regardless of the divinations and the mix of witchcraft and the prophetic god is still in the church when you want to find where god is on earth the bible says he was found in the midst of the seven candlesticks you will never come to a point where you will not find god in the church this is a revelation that will help you to tread spiritual pathways listen in every assembly i don't care whether the man is a herbalist or a devil if there is one person who genuinely believes in the hand of god for the sake of that one person god will find a way of manifesting himself in the church whether or not he is received are we together now please listen do not carry this idea that god is is just in some places and not in some places no the bible says in the midst of the seven lampstands are we together you must have this understanding about the body of christ so that when you go for a conference and you watch the people playing games and the people trying to get money out of people as angry as you are there is a consolation he is still in the midst of the seven lampstands so you take your eyes away from all the error and the jamborees and you pay attention if you pay attention you will find god this is already a deliverance for someone because if you are looking for a perfect church you will not find one you will find a man of god who is warded but lousy while you are angry with that one you find the one that loves god but once in a while he touches beer when there's pressure are we together and then while you are running you find another one brothers and sisters in the midst of the confusion of the church christ is still in the church so you have your your predefined you have your idea about how service should be run koinonia is quite organized if during praise and worship you decide to just fly over here the protocol will carry you and take you out we're a bit organized but there's a church you go to that somebody can even be dancing and come and jump and the man of god will hold him and jump back and you now roll and enjoy you will go to that kind of church with your cynicism because you want everywhere to be like koinonia and then you do not have the flexibility to understand that god is not in the church because it is perfect god is in the church because he is the one perfecting it believe this and you will have a very very open spirit about the body of christ there is no way i cannot preach there is no way i can if tell me um call well i i don't mention names of men of god but please permit me to just call one call uh, Gurma, that guy lagos about an expert Gurma Raji, right if Gurma Raji invites me for dinner i will go i won't do it in a secret i will do it in the open you will snap me and it will be on facebook I will go and eat with you the person who cut the meat you bought from the market today is doing worse things than Guru Maharaj what they did with that cow before you ate it but just because you didn't see it you now bought the meat you didn't pray over it you boiled the thing and ate it well, you see this hypocrisy and lies in the church is why we don't find God listen there is no man who is influenced outside of his will being in the presence of evil is not what corrupts people 
opening up to the influence of evil is what corrupts a man this is not a justification to be unruly with your spirit but you must be conscious of what is within you above and beyond what is around you let me tell you christ is in his body don't think one man's anger about what the church is doing so the, the argument that oh there are people who wear trousers and god is not in this church there are people who veil their hairs and don't believe in wearing trousers they are people of the law god is not in this church these ones are grace people god is there these ones are law people god these ones are old testament christ is everywhere trust me trust me i've gone to too many places and i have wondered and marveled at the presence of god that came there so when i go for a meeting i expect imperfection from the vessels so it doesn't surprise me are we together now i went for a meeting one day and the man of god was preaching and they were clapping and he was carried away and he did something that kai a christian should not do you know women of god once you are carried away especially when you joke and people clap it now you, you now digress and start saying things that don't make sense and he did something that was not nice I said well god this is your church you are still in your holy temple we fear you but just have mercy on us and my ears was open and i was blessed i was blessed so if you go and sit down in a church where they say everybody fetch sand for instance it was, ah, what am i doing here no let me tell you you can ignore the sand part and pay attention even if you don't learn any spiritual lesson you can learn diligence even if you don't learn anything, you can learn excellence. If the message is not blessing you at all, look at the backdrop. All right, this is a new color. I've not seen you. There's something to learn. Because whatever it is, Christ is in his church. Listen to what I'm telling you and you will be so mature. You will marvel and wonder at your level of spiritual maturity. God's idea is not to make the whole world koinonia. That's, that's a dream. If that's what you think we are doing, we're, I'm not one of those men of God who believes that will convert the whole world to become our church. It's a dream that God will stop by himself because that's not his idea. I think kingdom. So regardless of my personal contribution, I am also um, of the proposition that the church as a universal entity will make progress, even if it is not my unique so if somebody is healed, whether the person was healed from MFM or living faith, it doesn't matter. The most important thing is an avenue has been created for the power of God to find expression. Are we together now? God is still in the midst of his church. Please listen. Brothers and sisters, God does not use us because we are perfect people. No. Self-perfection is, is exhausting and unnecessary. Number two, <clears throat> Matthew chapter 16, verse 8. There are certain things that I want to straighten out tonight about the body of Christ so that our approach over the body of Christ will be very balanced because many men of God do not have the courage to teach this because of their bias they run churches like their personal organization matthew 16 verse 18 is the second point that i want to communicate it says and i say unto thee listen thou art peter and upon this rock i will build my church everybody say god will build his church so who is the builder of the church god never left the building of the church to joshua selman or any other person he himself is the builder of the church imagine if god left the building of the church to me i will first gather all the people who are my tribe is that not what we do are you my tribe no you are not part of this building and we make it look like association of christian members of of northern i will build my church and if you allow me build it the gate of hell that means if the gate of hell is prevailing over your church, you are building it. Because God said, I will build it in such a way that it will be so fortified that the gates of hell will not prevail. Please listen. 
I want you once and for all, especially for those who are pastors or those who are trusting God for ministry, bury this ownership mentality about ministry. This is why pastors fight. Do you fight what is not your own? If I want to touch a Jimmy's child now, it's his child. Are we together now? And so he will stand and defend it. If I'm touching this flower, you may feel bad, but it's not your own personally. So you have no right to challenge me. The decoration department can be angry, but at least not you. So why do I become so personal? If somebody says, I don't like koinonia, you take it personal because you are the geo, you are the builder, you will, you will pay for the bills, you will manage all the crises there, and you will run yourself to an early grave. I learned this early in life. God, if you don't build your church, let's be embarrassed together. I am just a pipe. The way, you see, let me tell you, this is the reason why there is so much refusal to confront truth in the body of Christ. Even when the truth has been known, because everybody is conscious of his own church. So we run, we run ministries like business ventures. I have 2,000 members in my ministry and my church these are my sons these are my daughters they are everybody's at my beck and call and then you now try to spiritualize it by saying god is helping us ownership mentality as a leader you should be responsible over that which god has given to you but you see we are stewards in the kingdom if men of god knew that they are stewards they would not kill themselves I see the way a lot of pastors yeah i mean you see somebody he didn't come to church you almost kill him i didn't see you in church why to mean you reduce the number it's because of you they they, they thought well they, they have been writing that we are 50 now you are the one who is making them think we are 48 you see that kind of mindset listen listen i'm speaking to you if you don't relinquish the the pressure that ownership brings it will kill you early that's why people fight hallelujah that's why people fight if you ever want to see expansion in anything and in ministry you must surrender everything to god you see the way we do koinonia the, the workers are aware god forbid but if i die today you only cry for seven days today is what friday i assure you by tuesday or wednesday you'll be used to it ah apostle is dead i'm dead how, I mean, what happened? This guy even released long life. What, what you are saying is irrelevant because I'm gone. They will bury me, take me. My mother will cry. All the people, they will cry and everybody will be fine. When they dump, that's all. I tell you, and by next week, Koinonia continues. The only thing you will miss in this ministry is my unique grace. I preach enough messages to bless the body of Christ. But there are pastors, the day they miss service, everybody will know this service was a mess. Where are you, pastor? Where are you? Listen, never have that kind of attitude over the body of Christ. The best of any member is only an effective member. No one person equals the church. The, the, the recognition of this is equal to wisdom. Are we together? I learned this early. And so I let him take the glory. He's the one building Koinonia. And for as long as I allow him to keep building it, that's the reason why we do ministry pressure free. There's no frowning at everybody, frowning at the offering. Once they are dropping, you are now looking. You see five naira in the transparent side of the basket, you are angry. Five naira, how much is generator? How much is this? If you, if you want to fund ministry by yourself and be responsible, oh no, 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 no. Get set to kill yourself. I'm too young. I plan to live very long. Forget this story about death, I told you. I have the, I have the confidence to say it because I plan to live long. The mysteries of life that surround me are more than any devil, bomb blast, accident, etc. That's why I can talk about it. I scare death to his face and go to bed because death is a spirit. It's not one of those touch not no 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 come on ask it
The sun will no more give me sunlight by day. The moon will no more give me moonlight by night. Jehovah will be my everlasting light. He'll be your glory, your strength and your sight. The light of the moon will be like the light of the sun. And the light of the sun will shine seven times as bright. When Yahweh climbs up the wounds of this world, He heals all the bruises inflicted by this world. Hallelujah. Listen. God is the builder of the church and like every member in the body or the corporate body you can allow God to build your life because your own body not koinonia my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit so I allow him to build me into prosperity I allow him to build me into health I allow him to build me into increase I allow him by aligning to him every other thing is the work of grace my own part is alignment through obedience are we together listen i'm speaking to someone tonight come on to me jesus says all ye that are labor and are heavy laden you are putting upon yourself self-inflicted frustrations there are pastors who before a service starts they will call the department how many people are there now say kite the way it is it's like 80, 81. I was 81. Today that is a convention. Depression for no reason. And I will build my church. Papa Oyedeko was sharing how that when they were dedicating Covenant University, the Lord asked him to lie down flat on the ground in front of the gate. Are we together now? Different men of God have their different skills of surrender. Papa Ia Deboe will kneel down. Once he just goes on stage, he will kneel down before everybody, which is uh, what they call that thing? Tambourine. Say, look, don't be carried away that I'm among the world's hundred most influential people. I can sing and dance before God. Other people roll on the ground before God. All that they are doing is saying, Lord, let the people see that it is the finger of God not the brain of a man your brain is too small to run ministry ministry pressure will blow it into pieces hand it over to the all wise God listen every time you see supernatural things in the church don't fight it it is the finger of God because most times the reason why we doubt the fact that it is God is we look at the individuals that God is using the protocol people are here and they will tell you most times when we travel for administration most people did you know that over 70 percent of the people who have been blessed through this ministry have never seen me they don't even know how i look and i love it you cannot imagine we're dropping from the airport and then we come out and then they are looking they greet victor how are you they greet mike and then they look at yerima oh yerima is quiet he looks like he's the one and then i'm there with polos and my earphone and I'm just moving and then I say how are you and I can see the disappointment we labor to borrow jeep we labor to do all of these things to carry this thing but there is this treasure in earthen vessels listen when you know this no matter how high any result you see is you will not be afraid of it because you can see where the man's limitation stopped you know from here it's no longer joshua selman this is the hand of god jesus said if i by the finger of god cast out these demons the kingdom has come to you same thing with honor we're talking with um while the protocol person was driving me eddie was driving me coming we we're discussing with him in the car and then i was telling him i said can you imagine how uh what was i even talking about i was talking about honor how people crave for honor in the body of christ once somebody is entering when i was coming i saw the media people chasing me with camera just snapping and i said this these are the things that kill men of god you snap your way into death unnecessary honor 
let me tell you something i have found out by experience that honor is a mantle if god has not given you there is nothing that will bring it to your life what someone did that brought honor you would do it and they would trivialize it but when that grace comes no matter what you do and jabez was more honorable which service did he conduct it was an anointing hallelujah and i will build my church i learned this principle of absolute surrender long ago in my life and it's one of the foundational things that's why when men of god stand and they are bragging i this and that my shoe is fifty thousand. this suit came from this and i said lord i know how the suit came it came through favor favor i'm unashamed of the favor of god oh you were smart fine you qualified after 20 years of ministry to be sitting in this position i was carried on the wings of grace i know how i got there and so i don't become foolish he is the builder and so i give him all the glory i will not say lord you are the builder then when it's time for shine i say god this is my moment just allow me savoy it now. to you be all the glory the reason why we don't give god glory in church is because we do not recognize that he is the builder the leaders know everybody knows i tell you that anybody climbs this pulpit one day to brag and make noise as though it's his strength I, I i don't know what will happen to that person maybe thunder will just strike on his head and drop him dead there koinonia is a mystery held only by the hand of god only by the hand of god and not the wisdom of a man he said rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god he said no man for no man can do these things except god be with him is god with you and are you allowing him to build your life are we together say after me god is building the church that's why let me say something except for very very um, for few exemptions the idea of people running away from their church because they feel it's not hot enough is not correctly kingdom because god is building his church as lukewarm as that church is one day the fire of god will fall on one quiet youth who is around one at the back of one toilet praying for three hours every day he will just pray and go back and say lord this boredom in this church i am taking the burden every day he's just praying in tongues three hours one day he will have an encounter that's what happened to apostle babalola right quietly he went to tap uh, um i don't know if it was palm wine or something I, I can't remember the story now and the fire of god fell upon him he saw a whirlwind like that of moses and a voice spoke from it he had an encounter and then there were already a group of prophets who refused to endorse him in the ministry and one day they were watching him from the window during a prayer session and the guy healed a madman in their presence and the lord told them this guy is one of the people to carry that apostolic grace that was the only condition that they received him and extended a hand of fellowship for him brothers and sisters please let god build your life all this bragging i'm beautiful that's why it's working you will see the limitation of beauty when it is only beauty building your life i'm rich that's why i i i got first class that's why remember last was it last month or month before last when we prayed for a first class student here who was jobless how do you explain that please make up your mind for the body of christ and for yourself that from today you will never be embarrassed to directly acknowledge god in all your ways i'm sharing with you a principle that will bless you in all your ways acknowledge him right Proverbs chapter 3, when you read from verse 5 to 6 to 7, really, that's verse 6. In all your ways, acknowledge him and there is a promise he will direct, make straight your path. My ministry, my business, my intelligence. Many guys are around me. Even them, they know that I'm fine. Continue. Instead of you to use the opportunity and say, Lord, thank you there are many ladies nobody will even say good morning to see let me tell you 
men can deceive you but when you deceive yourself you are really in deception everybody here we know where god brought us from everybody knows i know where god brought me from so i'm not going to allow all of the blessings from ministry get me carried away some of us will not acknowledge it by ourselves but if others try to do it in a way you know is destructive you will enjoy it it's like saying i won't buy beer with my own money but if sam buys for me i won't mind you are still a drunkard because a drunkard is not the one who buys beer by himself is the one who drinks it whether it was given as a gift or bought with your money an arrogant person right a boastful person the one that will face destruction from god is the one who always looks for an opportunity for vain glory i'm not saying don't honor people don't acknowledge people i know you love me you respect me you honor me i love you and i honor you too however there is a limit and it is the responsibility of everybody to draw the line there are things people do for me i say no no this is too much and i will build my church if you allow me build it the gates of hell will not prevail say amen, amen. number three is god blessing us please pray in one minute before we continue and say lord build my life i've been trying to do this thing in my own strength please pray trying to enter a relationship by your own strength you tried makeup it didn't work you tried with on it didn't work you tried buying designers it didn't work because it doesn't work by all those things it takes the mercy of god open your mouth and pray i've tried it by my strength i've tried succeeding i've stretched my intellect from border to border tonight i give it up i give it up please pray in all your ways acknowledge him lord if you do not help me nobody can help me if you don't take me from where i am to the place of destiny there is no possibility outside of you can you pray in all your ways acknowledge you hallelujah please listen let it be a culture in your life every time men begin to clap become an usher point them to jesus hallelujah and i if i be lifted up from the earth i will draw all men you never see me say i did this the power of my might uh, i did this do you know every time we finish koinonia when i go back home many times after counseling people i just i have one small chair it's my little altar with God. I just get down on my knees. Sometimes when I come, especially during the miracle service, mighty things that God has done, you know, that's how I can just, sometimes I can, I can stay in that position and that's how I pass the night, just acknowledging him. I don't cry before people, but I cry before God. I just sit down and I see his faithfulness. When we had 25,000 likes on Facebook, exactly 25,000, I was on my knees before God and I said Lord I know people with TV ministries whose Facebook page is not even up to 3,000 is the faithfulness of God I said Lord to be able to influence people I hear that already this is just like the second service there are over 1,000 plus people following us on Facebook already I mean on um, our online radio right now connected listening to me from around the world during my birthday last year there were about 16 nations 16 nations called to say happy birthday i've not gone to those almost all of those nations maybe but the faithfulness of god if you learn to acknowledge god some of you if god gives you half of the anointing he has given me your knee will never touch the ground again because of arrogance the knees that used to touch the ground this was how i used to cry in his presence in the night on concrete floor People are sleeping and I'm crying and say, God, please, if you ever will need to use a man, I'm available. Then I could not afford suit. Now that I can afford it, that suit must rub the ground. Except it's not my own. If it tears, let it tear. Be lifted high. 
be lifted high for your glory be lifted high be lifted high be lifted high for your glory be lifted high in my life be lifted high be lifted high for your glory of your money you you that's the day you will know you don't fear god because prosperity gives you options can you stand and look at 100 million 1 billion and hold it and say lord this will not take my place in your place in my life oh god bless me for where you began to love god the day one guy said i love you by yourself you have not prayed since that day till today no need for prayer again the day someone said ah you are pretty the day they said lead one small prayer and two people fell under the anointing god never saw you again ah this is how people cheat themselves out of the realm of the spirit they cheat themselves out of the place of power i tell you this is why the body of christ may never come into unity because of this spirit of pride i did this i built the church i did this it was by my wisdom i prophesied and it happened i spoke to her and she came with triplets the bible says a man can have nothing except it be given to him by the father this was the secret of david david knew the hand of god he will say many are they that rise up against me many are they that say where is his god he said but thou O lord you are a shield for me that i have not fallen is not a product of my strength oh i'm this i don't like ladies keep quiet and give god all the praise i'm anointed i finished three days dry Come and see what God did in the meeting. Who told you? Who told you? He does these things that men may fear him. Let me tell you something. I show you a secret that will make God foul to keep lifting you. Men may talk. They, their talk, will, they, their saliva will dry from their mouth. But you will just be rising by a mystery no human can explain. Be lifted high, be lifted high, higher and higher, Lord. Be lifted high, be lifted high, higher and higher, Lord. This is already a message to somebody this may be the missing key behind your glory that just faded from last year you found out that it was like Ichabod there are people like that I watch preachers on TV and without a sense of cynicism I see the fading of the glory people are still celebrating but those who are in the spirit know there is nothing new in this grace it's dried money is still coming but it's dried I tell you 
I've had ministers that I respect so much. I've had ministers that I acknowledge the dealings of God in their life. Speak in recent times and I was shocked. How can a man touch a level of spiritual reality and not have anything else to tell the body? There are people who have been etched out of the program of God because of this pride. There are musicians who have left the scene of Nigerian gospel music never to come back again. Because right now, if you don't give them 1.5, they will not come. You have to talk to multiple PAs. They've forgotten that it was one song they didn't even write. It came that day, they didn't eat. And they were praying. And God said, let me bless you. And he brought one song that opened them up. And from that day, have you noticed that most of these people, any other song they write, no matter what they do, it will never sell again. Because it was never about the song. It was about the grace. There are some of us here. Please hear me. I'm speaking to you. I know pastors who anything they did used to work. No matter how small. It was like a charm. They can organize a program in 24 hours. But right now, whether you put balloon, whether you fly around with plane, nothing happens. Because it can the glorious departed. I tell you something. The sin of pride is worse is worse than the sin of drunkenness and all of these other things when God will lift a man and you now stand and forget the God of your salvation I spoke to a, a man of God one day I used to know that man very interesting then God had not done anything much in his life but I spoke to him recently and his arrogance oozed out like an odor I could literally smell it with my physical nose. I was talking to him on phone. There are pastors who until you now have a seat, they forgot how God took them. You want to see Joshua Selman stand here with your 50,000 or your 100,000. Not that God led you to honor. Not that they challenged you in church to sow. They now stand. As you are dropping it in the basket, then you see the man of God water for me to do that may God take my life for what be lifted high be lifted high for your glory be lifted high be lifted high be lifted high for your glory Please sit down. We have to hurry up. I already sense the presence of God. Let's hurry up. Number three. The third thing that we need to understand. Listen. For the body of Christ to attain the unity of faith. Is to separate between doctrines and personal dealings with the spirit. Please listen. What I'm telling you tonight is very deep. Pay attention. There is a difference. Listen. Between your personal path of spiritual progress as earmarked by God on the strength of what he's making you become. Are we together now? We all start our journey into the things of the spirit together. But as we proceed, the election of grace diverges men into different trajectories in the spirit. Are we together now? And so if both of us start together and you are called into the prophetic ministry, I'm called into the apostolic ministry. You are called into business. Somewhere along the line, there will be a divergence. The same way students start course, science, whether engineering, medicine, you do the same thing. Are we together? As you progress, what happens? You now begin to move to different programs that are custom built to produce that thought, that knowledge in you. Now, the trouble is this. Most people especially preachers have not been able to draw the line between their personal dealings with God and some of the ordinances and the covenants that they are compelled to make to strengthen their personal work with God so that they can be effective in dispensing the dimension of God committed to them they they do not draw that line and everything their personal dealing in the spirit they ship it to the altar and teach it as a doctrine are we together now listen paul said all things are lawful 
but not all things are expedient are we together now did you know that god can come my dear god can look at this lady and in his personal dealing with her because she's on her way to become the wife of a man of god and a man of influence are we together now god can tell her my personal dealing with you you are not going to wear trousers are we together now that is not about wrong or right you are occupying a position where you will be a mother to many and i need you to be as modest as possible so that you can give the clearest picture of a virtuous woman that is a personalized dealing but by the time you now ship your personal experience and use it as a template to define virtue you bring error in the body of christ are we together now there are personal things god can give a man are we together now stringent rules that god has given people it has nothing to do with old and new covenant it is your personal work with god god can be so meticulous as to define for you the kind of clothes to wear because of an assignment god can be so meticulous to define to you the kind of the number of children to have god can say because of the enormity of this assignment you cannot have more than two children if you like have eight but at my recommendation for efficiency is two it's left for you to sacrifice your personal ambition of wanting ten children to say lord for your glory if you are lonely after two you buy a puppy but anything outside that you position yourself are we together god can say because of where i'm lifting you you cannot have three cars at any given point people who sow 20 cars find the best three and give the rest out and people they don't know these are ordinances that control power in the spirit it's not something there are things that god has given me like personal rules it's in the bible samson was given a code they said samson the secret of your anointing is tied to your hair you are a nazarene separate unto god let no razor touch your head you can shave but not bad and delilah came he tried to do every kind of thing and she went to his hair bob the hair and bob the glory away from his life until he died are we together now listen most when i see the way many ministers are careless i'm surprised because you see increase in ministry can make you forget the precepts and the ordinances of god that were given to you there are agreements that i had with god i've done all kinds of crazy things there was a time the lord gave me an instruction i put hundred like one one thousand like hundred thousand on the ground and the lord said i should pray as i'm matching it that's how i kept matching it i was praying in tongues for hours declaring that finances will never have dominion over me will i tell you to do it it is a personalized dealing are we together now please listen this is giving us maturity separate between the ordinances of god given to you in the secret place for the purpose of efficiency and doctrines that are established by the integrity of the world they may not be wrong but God gave you that because of the capacity he has also given you. Somebody like Papa Adeboe, his covenant with God was that every time somebody before like you worship God, Papa he would go down Adeboe on his knees. His Are we together now? Whether in London, before like Obama, God, before anybody, he would do this. Are we together? Are we together now? Whether in London, there are people because of their covenant with god they would never own more than two personal houses they will make many rich but they themselves are limited for many years many years i wanted to buy a car god stopped me i don't know how many times there are times i've smiled thinking i just went to god oh god i like this no way will i stop you from buying a car if you want to follow my own path for you god didn't direct you and it <laughs> What is your dealing with God? There is no man of the secret place 
who will not eventually have personalized dealings with God where unique ordinances will be given to you from God hmm. it was William Branham that was given a sign by the Lord that every time his right hand begins to shake the angel of the Lord that accompanies his ministry is in the place and he will stand for hours and people are watching him and he says he's waiting for the arrival of the angel and people are angry which angel we've been here and then his hands begin to shake and he says the angel is here and you begin to see dramatic things you try it you don't know whether it's demonic or you see how spirits get into people because you now begin to see yours and say ah william branham whereas he's a spirit god is warning you the atmosphere of god's glory is causing a spirit to react instead of you to cry for help you are there rejoicing that you are growing listen it is costly and dangerous to take your personal spiritual presence and bring it as a sign just like the example i shared did you know that there are ladies that god will give them rules no heavy makeup aside from powder and just something does it stop there he may not necessarily fight it but what he's saying because of what i am making you become can you sacrifice this for me Are we together listen if you love the lord there is nothing he will make as a demand from you that will be too much to give him <sighs> hallelujah it is lack of this separation between personal dealings i've done all kinds of crazy things with god but i cannot bring it as a doctrine i i stopped sharing my experiences the only experience that most people have had is my encounter with jesus there are many more but i will not share it because these are personal dealings and if you are not careful when you begin to share it it will make people to deviate from having confidence in the knowing the word to begin to search for encounters and when the devil sees your appetite for sight in the spirit is the exact raw material he needs to deceive you one day you will see something that will not be of god Hallelujah. So many altars today, many constitutions of churches have the personal geos encounter as the rule for the church. If geo does not eat salt because God suspected that he may have high blood pressure and God before that time, you see that just a simple rule. Now he will now add it. If you eat salt in that church, you are anti what god is doing that's wrong that's a personal dealing there are people read the bible because of certain kinds of anointings they were forced to be vegetarians so that they can host certain kinds of the anointing but you don't stop somebody from eating jesus for instance never ate meat he only ate fish cereals it's in the bible you never see a record where jesus ate meat who told Paul kill and eat? Answer me. Who told when when remember those unclean animals? Pig everything when it came down. Ah, Peter said, like Jesus, me too. And Jesus, ah, I had to do you are not going to the cross. I know what I was doing. He said, kill and eat. He didn't say just kill and look at it. Kill and eat. Listen, you can see two people. They will do the same thing god will keep quiet over somebody but for the other person god will say let's go back to the secret place i am saying god me again everybody is praying for one one hour god is letting them you pray for four hours god is saying you are not being serious and you are like god what is this watch this you don't compare your work with god with what is happening to the other person there is a template air marked for you based on what god is doing in you and based on where god is taking you to separate doctrines a good pastor will know how to teach people the truth void you may at times initiate your personal experiences to buttress on some point but the message cannot be hinged upon your personal experiences your personal experiences are too mysterious and haphazard it will take only you to understand them when you share it with people it will lead them into confusion there was a time in my life for instance where the lord asked me not to read my bible for one week you see that kind of strange thing 
imagine teaching you now you say thank god i always knew that this my not having appetite to read the bible is not backsliding i've been looking for an excuse even apostle don't say that to us i'm even saying it now warning you it was because god i was in a season of my life where god was teaching me certain things are we together now and god was teaching me that it is more profitable for me to receive the word than just to read it and the lord began to tell me that i am ever learning then but not coming to the knowledge of the truth i was obsessed with rema i would sit down with dick's bible and eat it cover to cover greek words check everything just look at it and i knew that something was wrong and the lord began to speak to me it's not just about dick's bible and strong concordance do you believe the little i have given you because faithfulness is the key to increase not just careless knowledge and the lord began to teach me that there are pastors that i'm allowing them to glean along certain paradigms in the spirit but this is unnecessary for your kind of ministry so you must stay with me to teach you the diet combination that will produce that apostolic grace in your life and so because of that it was an experiment for seven days but i cannot share that experience and use it as a doctrine hallelujah is god blessing you how many people have we confused as pastors with our personal experience because the man of god wants two children like i said anybody that has three four you are eyeing the person in your church five you are looking with anger six you are looking with rebellion why put people under pressure just because there are certain people because of their call they may not marry I hope you know oh yes men and women alike because of the nature at least we saw it with apostle paul because of the nature and the demands i always imagine if paul had a wife he would have been as good as not marrying because the number of times she will see him in her lifetime is countable prison today ephesus today diana will influence somebody to go and you know all kinds of things so god knows why he just said look paul I know I will compensate you when you come to heaven, but for now, forget about the issue of women and pay attention. So if you are not married, does that mean you pressure people and every time somebody says, I want to get married, you there are people like that. Any area that is not a major area of dealing in the spirit, they don't pay attention to people when they are having those issues. They don't deal with them in that area. personalized dealings God can give you dealings food clothes the way to communicate certain things to do and not do it's not just the cause of the law it is his unique dealing for you because he has studied your vulnerability and your strength and he has seen that it's only in this kind of atmosphere like a buffer he creates for you so that you are safe and if you walk within the jurisdiction of his description i'm telling you you will never fall praise the lord let's take the last point and then we'll pray is god blessing us today hmm. romans chapter 12 from verse 3 we'll read the a part and establish the last point and then we'll pray thank you jesus romans 12 verse 3 for i say through the grace given to me to every man listen that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think right but to think soberly according as god has dealt to every man the measure of faith listen the bible says there is a way a man can have a perception of himself that is correct but there is a way a man a church can have a perception of himself herself to a point that the bible calls it more highly that means you have crossed the boundary the acceptable level the last point 
this one has troubled me personally the inability closely related to the point i just shared the inability to separate between thus saith the lord and our human opinions please write it down the inability for ministries pastors to separate between thus saith the lord a prophetic word coming from god and the sincere opinion of a man a combination of his exposure his intelligence please look up there are many churches today that even if the man of god coughs people say yes lord because the man has created an atmosphere i'm not laughing listen please we are, pray, we are going to pray now there are men of god who have created a picture of ministry that everything that comes from them is of god are we together we do not know that the holy spirit is not a fool there are many times paul will speak and say i speak as a man this is my opinion my frank intellectual analysis on this issue because you see we we have transferred this inferiority that came from the continent of africa into our lives and we feel that the only way to respect us is when um we give people an idea that everything that comes out of the man of the the words of the man of god came directly from god what has this led in the body people refusing to marry because a man could not separate his opinion i can look at a lady come mama i can look at mama now are we together and see a very beautiful lady and say ah mama this lady is a nice lady oh. if you have been praying i think this is this lady is worth praying about that's a human opinion he's saying amen i'm busy using him as an example and you are saying amen <laughs> hallelujah oh yes ah he knows what he's here in koinonia to receive are we together now so i am listen listen i'm telling him sincerely oh look at this lady we have all watched her in koinonia she loves god she's a serious lady she's serious if god is sending you to a ministry this is the kind of person to be a pastor's wife not by any vision by intelligence and sight and logical conclusion based on the principles of the word of god you know a bad woman when you see you don't need a dream you see all the attributes you know an irresponsible man when you see him you don't need any angel to appear and say this guy is not an he's not he doesn't like the things of god you are unequally yoked what you love is what he hates the more you are growing the more he's angry with your spiritual growth is that a good man what prayer do you need about it you pack your load and leave god gave us wisdom he said wisdom is profitable to direct so back to my example i can now tell mama but if because of my arrogance i now say mama that's your wife wife that's that's your that's your husband are we together now let me tell you what i've done to both of them i have tied them in an unholy i have put a stronghold upon their minds are we together now whereas this guy may be looking at another lady his heart is somewhere he has even started the process laying the foundation and all of this and now i'm coming to scatter the whole building because of a supposed vision another thing is seeing somebody and tell him i'm looking at you and i um go and start trailer business this guy is saying god is sending me to oil and gas he say trailer and because he respects me this guy for 10 years is trying to buy one truck are we together now listen men of god have destroyed the hopes the dreams the lives of people if you need money in your church and a man says i want to build i've gathered six million and you want to say so don't say god is demanding your isaac i'm telling you now my polite proposal is better than an armed robber's gun think about it that's not prophecy that's a threat you are threatening the man to withdraw his six million and deposit it otherwise armed robbers will come and truly if armed robbers come one day you say ah 
this man is a man of God. No, he's not a man of God. That's not the reason why armed robbers came. Listen. Every pastor and man of God here, listen. We owe God accountability. You know, years ago, I didn't used to know the, if, the effect of my words on people. I used to think when I just speak to people carelessly, it won't mean anything to them. But as I kept growing in leadership, I got to learn that the words of a leader is like the words of a father. It makes impact. You can look at a lady right now and say, I'm proud of you. Just that little step. To you, it's no big deal. But that will be the basis of her seriousness in the spirit. Ah, ah. Joshua Selman said he's proud of me. Ah, out of everybody in Koinonia. Because to you, it's no big deal because you are used to being celebrated. To someone who has never received a comment from somebody. The same way you look at somebody and say you're a bad girl. You were joking. And the lady is crying for one week. Oh God, I repent. Wrong words. We have not separated, thus saith the Lord from our sincere human opinion there are times people have met me over issues and i've told them honestly god has not told me anything about this issue however let's look at it from the bible okay this is what you are doing no the bible prohibits this try this take it this way and then sometimes in the midst of it god will speak expressly and i'll say this is the word of the lord to you and when i think what i said was of god if I later discover that at my level of growth or for whatever reason I didn't hear well, I will not have the embarrassment to say, sorry, I think we should pray about this thing again. That day, I thought it was God that said you should buy a bicycle. But right now, I found out that God has no business with you buying any bicycle. Let's pray. Do you have the courage, brothers and sisters, to separate between the word of God spoken to you to people or to yourself? And your sincere human opinion please sit down the body of christ has been destroyed because of this a man makes a mistake simply acknowledge it was a mistake he said are you joking even my mistakes are pro no 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 that dimension now is not of god once you get to that point is insecurity spiritualized hallelujah because you see in africa we have a lot of respect for the words of men of god and please listen pastors heads of departments and maybe all the people in our community online don't be under pressure to speak to people if god has not said anything it does not mean you are not anointed hallelujah so we have all kinds of people confused right now how many people have made mistakes in their marriage because he was a man of God that said so. You must marry so 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 and so person. Now he married the lady. And he doesn't know what to do with her. And they are all angry. And they are confused. And the man of God is there. I know men of God who have looked at people and say relocate. You shouldn't be doing anything in Nigeria. And sincerely he just perceived in his spirit. That this guy should be abroad. He now said go to Kenya. The guy is living like a, a fugitive in Kenya whereas he was living with authority he sold his house sold everything and left could it be that there are people seated here right now and is the supposed word from a man of God that has kept you limited you wanted to do business and the man said you don't have any any business doing any business right and now you've sat down because you thought that oh my own is just ministry that is coming and you are getting poor you are getting broke the day you went to go and meet uh, maybe the lady's parents for introduction they say what are you doing you say according to what my pastor told me he said i should not worry it would be like the twinkling of an eye and the father looks at you and he says, you have the courage to come and enter my gate the next time you come i will call police and they will catch you and you go back disappointed oh god did you not speak to me i refuse to be a fool i refuse to let the pursuit of god look like stupidity whenever there is no direct word from the lord i work with the principles of the word 
how many men of God were doing well in ministry until a prophet or an apostle somewhere in a meeting prophesied to them I know pastors who have no business having churches they are not supposed to open churches but they went and met a man of God now the man may not be wrong but he spoke a word he said I'm looking at you and I see 17 branches God is giving you speed the guy started dying the money that God allocated for the program he now started spreading 17 branches around and now he's killing him weekly budget 2.5 whereas his annual money that he's receiving from the small members is 500,000 where is he going to get the other money from so he starts lying he starts creating a prophecy session drop your 30,000 I speak to you that's what has led men of God into all of these things because of pressure separate between the word of the Lord directly see and a sincere communication of the truths of the kingdom there are times I prepare a message not that God told me necessarily I sat down as a leader I understand how to build people I know that if you have a ministry with people you must build them in the area of spiritual growth build them in character build them in finances family life leadership interpersonal skills these are things that are we, we are human beings God does not need to tell me that the wisdom of the word has taught me that you must build people holistically there are times I come on stage here and God completely from everything I've planned that does not mean he did not give the inspiration but at this current time this is what he wants to be said and I'm unashamed I drop it there are times I come here and I tell you this is what the Lord spoke to me this word came from God this is what he wants us to do it is not unspiritual to acknowledge your humanity listen to my message why revivals die the humanity of men people have sent me names Dio uh, Shegu who and who they say apostle who do you think among these three guys I said no 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 God has not told me anything I don't even want to start deceiving you but there are some of us here especially some of us who are just starting in ministry you are under pressure when you get that kind of text you just laugh and do tinini tanana and then it just lands on dio and you send back say dio i hear dio and now the lady and maybe dio is not even born again you now pin this lady with this this unspiritual brother for many years and she cannot move forward i deliver anyone here who has been under the influence of a wrong prophetic word that has tied you down and has refused you from moving forward in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ a man of God who is limited in scope see somebody who wants to do international business and he says no this is not of God he's using his limitation about his poor understanding on financial intelligence and destroying the passion of another person to expand you don't do that and then the worst part is when we start saying it's from God so right now brothers let me just buttress on this point but brothers cannot come and meet a lady you can't come and meet a sincere lady and just tell her oh you love God you have to start say look it was by 241 between 241 or 242 uh, sorry I was dragging you Abby. around 241 or 242 I was just strolling around somewhere and I saw what looked like a vision. I said, Lord, is this you? And he was silent. Now, the lady is standing and wondering, what's this guy saying now? Of course, she knows where you are going to. And he says, look, on a very good day, me, I'm just minding my business, but how can I be negligent of this heavenly call now that I've seen this call? And now the lady wants to say no, but she has been threatened by what? A vision. God said, you are my wife. I'm not saying... Go and think about it. What is the answer? The lady said, well, it's too early. I don't know you. Is this what you are saying? Me too. Do I know the vision? I, I saw it. I, ah. As funny as what I'm saying is, this is the template. The only way many brothers in many churches know how to ask a lady. They just come and say, what did, are you still wasting my time? Or I plan to marry based on what God told me. He showed me July are you doing this thing or not let's just know and it keeps backfiring again and again 
and again because you see the laws of the spirit are unemotional this again is also the reason why people are confused and let me just touch on this and then we'll pray today you go to bed and you see Amaka bless you darling tomorrow as soon as you wake up you see Shalhoma you are washing your face and you saw her face I say I reject it you saw it again are we together now next week you now see matter and then the individual is he sincere yes is she sincere yes but because you have tied your your paradigm are we together now to only visions you are confused you saw seven sisters in one week you are not a bad brother but you are seriously confused You can see me come matter. You can see me wearing suit and matter dressed like this. It can mean intimacy, not marriage. You have to go back to God to find out what He's saying. That you saw what looked like suit does not mean it's marriage. A ring can be a symbol of authority, not a vow to say I do. You see, you you you, you come down and then be careful. Some of these books, please. Um, um, it's my job and my duty to address these things although that's really not what I'm talking about but since it has come let's just let it land there are books many of us have read written by sincere people who have been confused that's why a man can be married and now be looking at a lady and then another prophet will come and say well I don't know how to tell you this thing but this lady you have married although you are 10 years in marriage she's the reason why your ministry is not moving forward i stand as a prophet of god to declare to you is there a lady called jane in koinonia I say, yes yes ma'am I'm, I'm. i said leave your wife go to jane now the man will not leave her in one day but automatically he was not eating her food again and then he now calls jane 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 how now how was service today then you say, fine, daddy. He said, why must you call me daddy? <laughs> it, has, it has started. I will talk. Oh, my name is Joshua Selman. <laughs> and the wife is surprised. He's prayed. He has suddenly developed an unusual passion for prayer in the night. And you go to the parlor and you see he's, he's secretly calling. Jane, what does it take to do you? Your wedding sharp sharp and he's planning on leaving his wife because somebody said first say the lord and in the church we are so unspiritual that anybody just stands and because he tells you something that is true then he now uses it to confuse you please listen to me anyone here who has left his financial pursuit because a man of god spoke to you and said you don't need it go back and carry those notebooks and start reading it otherwise you would you would chew your hands in the future to come the bible says a lazy man will not eat it has nothing to do with with vision are we together now if you graduate and you want to become a millionaire from you've nothing is coming in your hands now get a job and start from there do you need a vision there are two ways god directs men he can say start and he can say stop so if he doesn't say anything start I need to address this. Thus saith the Lord has destroyed a lot of people. So we have gotten into all kinds of things. Thank you, my dear. I went to pray for a woman some years ago. God is my witness. I saw over 21 anointing oils. And these 21 anointing oils was from different men of God and different prophets. 21. None of them was free. By the way, not one was free. She went to one woman, one prophetess. I, I was told that if you go to the woman's place, now I'm not criticizing. Maybe the woman is listening to the message. Hallelujah. And then the woman said, you have to camp in her hostel. You must buy her water. You must eat only from her restaurant. Who does not know that's business skill? No, 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 no. Don't threaten me with spirituality. Who does not know? If I have a ministry, wouldn't I want you to eat from my restaurant? It's a very sincere desire to generate revenue. Don't spiritualize it and make it look like if you eat my rice, 
there's there's the way that rice this is is it not on kubes or whatever they brought it they, they cook that rice you spiritualize it and threaten people there are members who cannot go and buy food in certain places because some men of god have supposedly put an embargo Haba. you want to take your children to a good school but the man of god has said if it's not my school except you are not under this ministry and you are threatened i set you free i deliver you from that nonsense this night in the name of jesus christ one of the benefits of spiritual growth is freedom marry me or you die you say oh, no problem i'm already dead you don't threaten me i marry because of love not force if you are in a hurry go and find somebody and go and meet them We give this terrible idea about God and it is the prophetic and apostolic ministry that has brought this bad idea about God. Everything that a man wants, he uses prophecy to make it happen. The Lord is speaking to me right now. Everybody package 10, 10,000. Come and drop it. Rub my shoes with it. It's a sign of speed. The speed I've experienced in two years of ministry. Carry that seed. Mr. Man, you need money no problem god designed a system to honor you don't tell lies and threaten the people for when god speaks there is grace for performance there are many angry people you see them remove the envelope and they are just walking to the man of god with anger they get there and they just kneel down and just drop the tear and say pray for me there are many members are angry and i foresee a revolt if we don't change because as tv ministry is exposing people right now a day will come koinonia is going on air and more people will hear these truths and when it happens people will say pastor my money because all that long story you have been threatening me i will say it without any fear or favor i'm a man of god there is a way i can come to you right now and tell you i am hungry please give me food and you will bless me but when I come and say the Lord instructs, even when God commanded Elijah, he didn't go to one and say, God has said it, did you hear? Bring food. He said, Madam, bring food for me. Thus saith the Lord. People have mortgaged their vehicles. They carried their jeeps and gave a man of God because he said, God said, bring it. God is not an idiot. Now, don't get me wrong. There are times that those kinds of instructions will come. I can't tell you how many times God has made a demand of my resources, demand of any and everything. However, anything that is not done by love, brothers and sisters, is sin. Don't let any man threaten you to marry him in the name of prophecy. Don't let any man threaten you. The worst one is becoming part of a church because of prophecy so like all these guys now serving the lord the day now they are ready to go and start their ministries or do something the man of god now stands and says if any of you leaves this assembly except i'm not a man of god there is a curse upon you nonsense there's no such thing as that except if they believe it they'll go and die as a result of lack of carelessness and preparation not because of insecurity expressed in a threat are we together now there are so many pastors they can marry they can get a job they can move because they are serving a self-centered man of god who is enjoying their ministry and will never allow them to move the moment they want to move you say the course remember and they now stay back i deliver you tonight in the name of the lord jesus christ man deceive you. listen our god is a good god our god is not a wicked god who comes out to just kill people and destroy their lives men kill themselves because of their violation of kingdom principles we're going to pray ephesians chapter 4 says it is for this reason he gave unto some when you read from verse 12 apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors teachers 
he says for the edification the maturing of the saints that's what is happening to you i'm not teaching you this listen please look up to be judgmental and imbalanced because some of you your various churches whether here or at home you have men of god that do some of these things the goal is not to go back with the spirit of arrogance and rebellion but the goal is to have a settled confidence immovable and unshakable to separate between thus saith the lord and anything that is a lie hallelujah but i know whom i have believed he says and i am persuaded that he is able so number one i spoke about the fact that god is always in the church i'm doing a review everyone say god is always in the church yes regardless of the imperfections god is always in the church when you go to church look for god don't look for doctrines when you go to church look for god don't look for dress code when you go to church look for god not a man's ability to speak good english or otherwise not a man's ability to gather degrees and then you use that to mean oh this guy knows what he's saying no when you go to church don't go around looking for mundane things go to church looking for the one who is in the middle of the lampstands bypass the mistakes bypass the arrogance bypass the flesh and find god if you search for him you will find him in every church because he's there for the sake of two or three who are gathered in his name the rest may be gathered in another name but when two or three are gathered in his name what did he say will happen he said there i am not by proxy in their midst number two god is the builder of the church and by extension the builder of your life always know that number three separate between your personalized dealings with god and the doctrines that god commits unto you your personal dealings with god may require you following some strict pathways that are for your personal consumption and not for the church not for members generally separate it feed the people with the truth as committed to you unto them and separate between your personal dealings and what god is telling them number four separate between thus saith the lord and your human opinions your human opinion can be spiritual and it can also be equivalent to the word of god but have the unashamedness to admit before people especially those who honor you and esteem you to be so anointed have the meekness to tell them this is my perspective on this issue and when god speaks have the unreserved boldness to say this was from god if i perish let me perish please rise up on your feet hallelujah we are going to pray i'd like you to please participate in the prayer i thought i'll have time to round off with psalm 133 a mystery god showed me about the blessing released when the corporate body comes but our time is up but i think we've had enough listen to me jesus said look up everybody and ye shall know the truth he says and the truth shall make you free he says therefore if the son of man sets you free you are free indeed many of us have been saved but we are not free because of these things and we are in our way contributing to destroying the body of christ with these points that i've shared pride claiming everything that is done is from you or criticizing ministries 
you call a ministry and say this ministry they are not anointed they don't even have rema there's no revelation in this ministry there are books god wants you to read and you feel i've left this man far papa Ia deboe comes for a crusade and you cannot attend because you think my level of revelation is far exceeding this thing this man is going to be teaching us as if we are in nursery school when you search for god you will find him in every church take my word for it when you search for god the god that i serve he's not just in your church he's not just in koinonia when you search for him you will find him he was found in prisons he was found in different places in the bible i choose to seek god not the perfection of men i choose to seek god not the dexterity of ministries i choose to seek god when i go for a, min a meeting i ignore the mistakes of the man of god i ignore the limitations i see his disalignments here and there but i sustain a spirit of maturity did you know brothers and sisters and i say this with all humility we are praying i've had the privilege to be called by different people and they have spoken to me about men of god and their limitations i think i was sharing with you was it some weeks ago one of them was one very great man of god and you know some people called me to say certain things that i cannot even begin to say here and they were true they were not a lie so when they said all these things to me i had started seeing these signs personally but then when it it, it personally broke me the lady had to do it in secrecy because this is i mean if you count the men of god in this country maybe the first 10 he will, will be among them repeatedly but i told them something i said listen i'm not justifying the things the man of god is doing but i can tell you authoritatively he's still a man of god whether you choose to disbelieve him or not I will build my church if he refuses to align in the secret place and a man for those imperfections he has God alone to face but as far as the building of the church is concerned Christ alone must be glorified do not let the imperfections of churches and men of God stop you from seeing God and receiving there are men of God who are very arrogant but I listen to them passionately because my focus is not their arrogance they should finish their boasting and then let me hear what god has to say and i know they carry something that i need so i ignore all of those things there are men of god who are very careless i ignore their carelessness and i pay attention there are men of god who are very vulnerable when you look at them you don't know what they can do but i ignore those things and i pay attention there are men of god who you know are standing very fine between the bridge of witchcraft and ministry i ignore all of those things i have had a passion to find god that's why i find him everywhere it doesn't matter where i look i find him you stop seeking for him and started seeking for perfection in a man of god in koinonia in your ministry you search you stop searching for him and you started seeking for perfection in every book you started seeking for which greek word is correct or wrong and it stops blessing you and defeat let me give us something isaiah 31 is a scripture that blessed me so much and i think it will bless you verse 1 to 3 those who depend on the strength of men the strategies of men listen to what the bible says war to them that go down to egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many it says and in horsemen because they are very strong but they look not to the holy one of israel neither seek their god let's go to verse 3 verse 3 please it says now these egyptians that you claim are so formidable they are men no are we together now it says and not god and their horses are flesh there is a limit to which they can defend you 
he says and not spirit when the Lord shall stretch out his hands listen both he that helpeth shall fall and he that is helped now this is an ancient language shall also fall down two of them shall do what if God does not help you and your destiny helper together so it is never from men I've taught you this all every good and perfect gift comes from above through men to you from God through men to you so your prayer is not to men the God of all flesh that can manipulate things according to his will from God through men to you when it becomes from men that begins the cycle of tragedy from your life anything God cannot give me let no man claim he can give me I know we say yes sir but we don't believe it it shows on our our desperation calling the attention of men you are my last hope Sam if you don't pick my call I'm dead that's a man who does not know God because he said if you will not praise me it is still within my power to raise up things that should not do that God is only limited by how much we trust him his wisdom is multifaceted has the capacity to invent new formulas of communicating your breakthrough to you your assignment is to trust him enough who is like him lion and the lamb seated on the throne mountains bow down every ocean rolls to the lord of lords never never allow your appetite or your perception of the ability of men and human strategies to help you to outrun and push away the fact that you know God is faithful I know you're a businessman and I've read every business book but by and large is only a channel every good and perfect gift comes from above I know you went to school but let me tell you something if God does not speak a word on your behalf your certificate can be a piece of paper on this earth as sad as the recession is it has brought so many arrogant people to their knees men who think God is limited by their perceptions and whatever it is no God is mighty he's not scratching his head in heaven wondering what to do with believers his wisdom is so infinite it reinvents itself to manipulate answers to men regardless of the circumstances you are God alone from before time began you are on your throne you are God The next time a man tells you I will not help you you are in trouble thank him don't cry go back to God and say Lord how many men did you say are on earth six billion let your wisdom your infinite wisdom that can raise up stones stones that can raise up stones to praise and glorify him I will never trust the strategy of men above God I love and know and fear him too much to be that foolish that a man comes and says look hey, Jimmy, tomorrow I'm going to change your life just because you have five billion in your account that's a joke is it not until that man wakes up from the bed in the morning listen I'm, I'm not I'm not teaching you this honor remember I've taught you the gift of men I'm showing you the depravity the falsehood the waste of time that is committed in making men God this God is a mighty God your trust in him puts pressure on his integrity pressure on his integrity 
that's what brought some of you here from so far you have put pressure on his integrity I assure you he will not disappoint you hallelujah all through scripture the Bible is full of God's promises and then attached to them are conditions that men must satisfy as a proof of their faith in God God cannot assume you trust him so he creates a condition so that you're activating that condition is proof of your partnership that I agree with you it will be costly for me to take this water and then tell Pastor Jimmy, I want to force you to take. No, 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 no. I can't assume he's thirsty. Are we together? So I say, Jimmy, if you are thirsty, I have given you access to this. Your picking the water is proof that one, you are thirsty, but number two, that you believe I'm not a liar. Now, if you want to come and pick this water and the protocol stops you, it, you, have, you have obeyed, you have put pressure on my own integrity. And so I come in. And I tell him no. I instructed him. He's acting based on his trust in me. He's not acting based on rebellion. The problem is never the devil. The problem is our fear. Alienated from the life of God. Through the ignorance that is in them. Number three, quickly. The third reason why people experience failure defeat perpetually is demonic oppressions demonic oppressions first john chapter 5 verse 19 demonic oppressions we live in a world that is full of demonic activities and the bible did not leave us in the dark as to the reality that there are forces of darkness that attempt to contend with the liberty of the saints it says and we know that we are of god read on and how many not Nigeria. The whole world does what? Lieth in wickedness. Like you say, my child is lying on a carpet. The whole world lies on a mystery of wickedness. The condition to be a potential victim of this is that you are born of a woman. The moment you arrive here, that's all. Are we together now? You know, several people say, who did I offend that all this trouble is all those things are they are just cultural ways of trying to manage pain the whole world lieth in wickedness the moment Jesus was born as a baby all of a sudden when a star came at the east Herod the spirit of the Antichrist began to walk in Herod and they wanted to kill Jesus even in heaven there was war he said there was war in heaven a woman i saw a mystery in heaven a woman was about to give birth to a child and a dragon came and stood waiting to eat the child and the bible says the earth fought for the woman and took the woman to a safe place hear me brothers and sisters the bible says forever oh lord thy word is settled it tells you the location in it takes faith and the operation of god's word for it to be settled in your life it is settled in heaven hence the dexterity and the order in heaven but on earth there are still forces contending with the purposes of God and the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 6 please give it to us verse 12 Ephesians 6 and then verse 12 for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities Listen, I want you to listen to my message against spiritual intelligence. That message has blessed so many people. I was talking with my mother, Jimmy, today, and uh, my mother almost made me cry. And she said she was listening to spiritual intelligence so much and making several decisions in her life based on that. Spiritual intelligence will teach you not to waste your time. Being angry with men, fighting men, because every man every man is just is a physical form being manipulated by a reality from the realm of the spirit you have to know this it is never about your in-law it is never about your son it is never about your daughter no no wasting time on men will make you hate people 
you cannot love there is a revelation that sponsors love so even if people speak against you you know that they are not speaking of their own Peter tried to rebuke Jesus that you will not die on the cross he said Satan get thee behind me and he said Peter Satan desired Peter said which Satan we came here together Satan desired to sift you like wheat but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not and when thou art converted strengthen your brethren because he will look for them too are we together he says but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against the spiritual wickedness in heavenly places Paul himself was not he did not leave the church in limbo as to the reality that at every point in your life there are forces that will attempt to mock God here's a revelation God gave me recently every sickness every oppression is like a letter satan is writing to god he uses men like the canvas and says i am making a mockery of men to prove that your word is not true are we together now so when i trust god and i still come and i'm sick and the sickness is eating me it's not about you satan does not even care he is trying to use men the highest of god's creation to make a statement to the heavens that bowing down you did not do i am now using your image to compel creation to bow down to me and so when god finds a witness men and women who represent the systems of god who represent portals that manifest the multifaceted possibilities of god in the earth they now begin to rewrite in the lives of men watch this so this lady come darling this lady has cancer it's eating her up that's a letter from satan it is never about the cancer satan does not care he is he is contented with the statement and the reaction of creation to him by reason of this are we together so when she comes for a miracle service like this god begins to rejoice not because he just became powerful finally an intercourse between need and supply listen every time hear me every time god heals a man it was not that night he planned to heal the man he had been navigating the need and the faith of that man to the grace the unction level it takes to produce that miracle and when two of them collide there must be a miracle i've taught you something listen oh let me not go ahead of myself i'm enjoying myself here very seriously listen this lady cancer now i've prayed for her and she's not healed that's a double message you see that that message now her faith begins to fail her because she's saying but but i mean does that mean my situation is different and she goes to god lord i love you i love you but then she begins to think and somebody comes to say look there's one man somewhere oh, i'm advising you all this your jesus thing me too i'm a christian i gave my life to christ before you were born i'm only telling you this what is there to just go carry one goat i can even give you half of the money you see it is a statement satan uses men their situations is like the pen he writes a letter to heaven watch the ones you claim you died for barren of your faithfulness yet you study from scripture I have been young and now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, not you see it back for bread. Then Satan comes to write a letter. That's why God is searching for men. He's not searching for men to give them titles. He's finding space in the earth through men. So that the multifaceted dimensions of his possibilities can be made manifest. Now, if this lady supernaturally gets healed, like the gentleman, look at the guy that, 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 um, that came back to life 25 people immediately 25 people because a dead body came back to life you can't deny that are we together that's a statement brothers and sisters tonight my father will write another statement yes he will yes he will see God does not just write anyhow. He writes in a way that he must force you to read it. 
his miracles are notable ask moses he made the bush to burn in such a way moses could not ignore it that's the same way somebody will walk out of this meeting and all of a sudden doors opening 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 hallelujah opening that's the god we serve so when miracles are not just a proof that a man is anointed that's the last reason for a miracle miracles are a message it's a reply from god back to men and to the gates of hell i am still faithful the lion the lamb my benevolence is still in force i am still good my mercy endures forever and he uses men sometimes you see in his wisdom he just allows the devil to exhaust his knowledge then he comes in so cheaply and lifts a man and says satan how about this when you understand this hear me you will passionately pursue the presence and the power of god not for fame you are seeking to give god space there is a statement that god needs to write to principalities and powers they mock god in our lives are we together this is what happens because it's difficult brothers and sisters we are humans when your life has a track red cord of perpetual failure it will test your faith and that's when satan comes and tries to say where is your god you are 39 years as a lady you have loved god all your life no marriage and i'm here believing my life anyhow i'm still married but another man see wants to add another marriage to me look at two of us brothers and sisters they are not speaking on their own it's a letter so it is good to give god thanks in that situation but it's best to give god thanks in victory are we together yeah. thank you demonic forces they exist they are real and they have made nonsense first thessalonians 2 18 please let's hurry up first thessalonians 2 18 The apostle was speaking and he opened us up to something very, very profound. I want us to read together. Ready? One to read. Wherefore, we would have come to you, even I, your breakthrough. But what happened? Help me, please. Once and again, your breakthrough would have come to you. Your prayers answered already. But Satan hindered us satan can attempt to hinder men from meeting men satan can attempt to hinder things from meeting men are we together now it's part of the reasons why we pray we pray because in the place of prayer we create our own climate and we command the forces of darkness we enforce the victory of christ and we clear the air for believers to receive the fullness of the blessings of God. The last reason, very quickly, and then we'll pray. Why do people experience limitations in their lives? They trivialize and ignore the place of spiritual empowerment. This is the last reason. The last reason, I've given you four reasons. Why people remain in perpetual defeat. They trivialize and ignore for many the place of spiritual empowerment. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. We celebrate the anointing of the Holy Spirit in this place. Not just the ministry of the Spirit. As you know we are on a series the Holy Spirit. He said, finally, my brethren, haven't told you all these other things. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His. The word might there means His resources. His resources. The power that comes with His resources. There are arsenals. There are mysteries. 
there are supplies of graces and possibilities that make God God and the Bible says we should be strong in that the power our access to those things is what gives us strength in this kingdom are we together now there are powers of darkness that will arise and contend with believers once and again Psalm 66 verse 3 Psalm 66 verse 3 let's read one to go say unto God how terrible art thou in thy ways help me please through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves brothers and sisters it takes power to reign in this kingdom it takes power to reign in this wicked world it will take power for you to rise and not compromise yet prosper it takes power it's more it takes more than sincerity in a wicked and a depraved world are you going to bribe no i will stand in for truth that means there is no promotion for you and you can remain there for decades are you from so 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 state no i'm not no you are not qualified for this position human sentiments it takes power to defy the wickedness of men it takes power hallelujah it takes power it takes power to build a ministry much more than wisdom it takes the ability of god he says rabbi john 3 verse 1 we know that thou art a man nicodemus seeing the mighty works of jesus christ they criticized him in the day but he smuggled his way to jesus in the night and said rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god for no man can do these things except god be with him the anointing of the Holy Spirit is God's authorization upon a man to represent him. God's authorization. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is God's ability. Listen, the capacity to produce God's result, God's dimension of result can only be produced by his dimension of power and grace. We trivialize the anointing because we have been taught that the anointing is for men of God and since I'm not being called into the fivefold ministry I do not need the anointing no brothers and sisters hear me the anointing the anointing I've said it again I want it to become a revelation in you that the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference the difference between a man who rises out of death and out of every challenge is the anointing a thriving ministry and a struggling one the anointing a thriving career and a struggling one the anointing the anointing will be the difference between your next level and where you are now don't trivialize it don't say it is unnecessary no the anointing is God's advantage in the life of the believer it truly is an advantage I think it was the last set of school of ministry students I was teaching them when we were doing pneumatology. I was teaching them about the anointing. And I said, this is our wicked world. People ask you, who is your father? He's an iron bender. Who is your mother? She sells a car somewhere in the road. No, you cannot rise. We are victims of the wickedness, the sentiments, the ethno-religious biases of men. In a world where people want you to bring something, you need the advantage, not an advantage. Brothers and sisters, the anointing can take you where anything can take anybody. The anointing. Others may get there because of their connections. Others may get there because Uncle So 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 went. And once you are there, they ask you, How did you come? And then you laugh. God's ability. God's ability is working in me. It's working in me. Is God's ability, God's ability is working in me, it's working in me. That will be your testimony. Is God's ability, is God's ability working in me?
the anointing will always produce supernatural results you've heard me say it if it is the lord's doing then it must be marvelous in our eyes if it is a man's doing it is natural and logical but brothers and sisters when your result defies the natural progression there is another agency other than you when your results in any area of life listen they called Jesus they said he was casting out devils by Beelzebub he said if I use Beelzebub the prince of demons by whom do your fathers their fathers were casting out devils they fraternized with the realm of the spirit access powers higher than a human power and were producing results that statement shows that no man can do supernatural things without the assistance of a dimension higher than that which you know yes yes in this day and age brothers and sisters the world is waiting for supernatural outcomes you don't just tell somebody be healed that's arrogance without the anointing now let me show you something i've taught you this again and again but i feel like doing it let me use a thousand naira if you would permit me please look at this because so many people really do not understand the operation of the anointing i want you to learn this please by the grace of God and by the privilege of his grace, I can tell you I understand the workings of the anointing. I want you to pay attention and listen closely. I may not boast of any other thing, but I can tell you I understand how this thing works. Listen, the anointing works like money. Watch this. If I give you, Ejimi, 1,000 Naira, do you know that there are many things this can buy? 1,000 Naira can buy this, but 1,000 Naira cannot buy a car. Are we together now so when if your desire is to buy a car you need multiples of 1,000 it is good that you have 1,000 but it is not sufficient to draw to your life the result this is how the anointing is don't say I'm anointed it must be to the level that is capable I thought this thing is energy physics defines power as work done per unit time that's the definition of the anointing God's ability that is dissipated per unit time to produce supernatural results that's the anointing listen if I try to lift this it doesn't mean I don't have energy it means the energy dissipated per unit time is small so I need another agency to assist me is that true believers this is how it is so it is not that the name of Jesus is there, it's not working. It is not that the anointing is not working. The situation that you are confronted with, this is why grace and peace is multiplied. Because there are situations that defy that current level. So he says, grace and peace be multiplied to you. Why is it multiplied? How God anointed Jesus, Acts 10, 30. Look at the extent to which he anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power let me show you how to be a blessing when you contend with the spirit to carry a dimension of grace and unction sufficient to solve most if not all the problems that you will find this is how you'll be a blessing if Dan Gote comes here now and decides to give everybody one one million how, do you, how many of you know that's not a prayer point for him? Because it is within his capacity. Are we together? If Koinonia decides to give everybody here one, one million, we'll have a problem somewhere. Correct? Not because we don't have money. It is the limit of our capacity. So it's not when, when this guy has a problem. It's like a shop. There is a dimension of anointing required to solve it. So when you come to help him, it's not just that you laid hands, he may even fall down. But the money is short. What do you need? More. More. More of the same thing. Not more of a different thing. More of what? The same thing. So Benny Hinn can climb the stage and he's not even held the mic and 40 people rise out of the wheelchair. You see, that's 
the anointing upon his life makes him see clearer the might and the possibilities of God when you are not heavily anointed you create a wrong picture of God because you struggle for little results and it looks like that's how much God tried to release that result but watch another man who comes with grace and unction and you watch ease as a testimony it's called capacity the anointing makes God look limitless in the affairs of men this is why regardless of the results here and there that God produces we still remain in the secret place because there is no brothers and sisters there are people scattered here tonight if I ask everybody to come and hold the mic people will not travel from end to end there are people following from over 45 nations of the world they are not sitting down and wasting their time no no people want solutions now a man of God gets up here called Joshua Selman I would be a wicked man if I have not stayed with God sufficient enough at least at the level of the growth to be able to partner with the Holy Spirit that's why we cry for his mercy because there are many situations that we need results beyond our current levels of dealings with God and we need the mercy of God to superimpose the current level of grace that we carry that's why sometimes I tell you that God does not heal people just through a man's faith he switches to the covenant that that man has with him and it becomes a platform upon which he reaches men are we together? tonight let me tell you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that there is grace to cause your mountains to look like valleys yes yes it doesn't take time it only takes time when an insufficient dimension of the anointing presents it learn this about the anointing the anointing can greatly misrepresent God. It's like a television that is not well tuned. It will make you think the producers were that poor until you take the same video to a clearer HD television. And that's when you watch the artistry of those people. The anointing can misrepresent the capacity of God. Hallelujah. I take time to teach like this because the miracles and all this will not take time once your heart is aligned to receive then you will receive miracles upon miracles are we together this is how he gets glory when he finds men who are heavily anointed please hear me never be caught up by the results you currently have now no matter how great I tell you you ask the Lord my work with God is as if I don't have an iota of his anointing in my life there is a standard and there is a capacity that I'm working with God and I seek to get I have seen them in dreams and visions and I did not see this current level we are trusting God for levels where before koinonia starts before the first prayer point half of the people who come sick are already healed completely one woman one of our mothers i met a new mother new wonderful mother in portacourt lovely people those of you from portacourt i know they are listening to me now they are following me lovely lovely woman i love you with all my heart and um, the whole family i mean they are just into this ministry with their heart she donated her car and everything for them to use for the program and she shared a testimony i think it was yesterday that touched me she had been having some kind of respiratory problems and so when they picked me from the airport her children insisted that she would sit down at that same place and that woman said she just sat down and the children drove her home brothers and sisters that was the end of it now listen listen when you understand the anointing there is something interesting about it when you understand the anointing and you are heavily anointed the more heavy you are anointed the will your will plays little role in its release it becomes wherever ask the woman with the issue of blood jesus did not even listen now he was not planning she just touched him and jesus said who touched me the anointing didn't say jesus can i flow no. so you can be in a restaurant you are eating and all of a sudden now you will never believe what i'm saying if you are casually anointed if you truly are anointed you become a blessing
you greet somebody just shake his hand and that day he has more customers than he can ever imagine now even you you do not know till he tells you an effulgence of spiritual possibilities you your life has become a gateway and a portal revealing a dimension of possibility that is not affordable to the natural man i welcome you tonight to this place where god has chosen by his spirit to reveal the multifaceted dimensions of his grace and glory please rise up on your feet oh, oh, oh. Oh. I want you to just pray two prayer points from the depth of your heart. Number one, I'd like you to insist and say, Lord, I release my faith. There is no challenge I came here with tonight that will return back. Go ahead and pray. Prophesy, declare it. I wave every captivity goodbye. Jesus is Lord. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hala prakato sete kata banda shabra gada bala. Shikete parato shka prata skala bala. Pray. I believe in the mighty God. Dera na 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 shela na. Shika dabala kata prakato shikete. Shibres kete shala banda kata. I have found David my servant and with my holy oil have I anointed him. It's the realm of your glory. It's the realm of your grace. I can see your mighty power moving in this place. We're in the presence of angels with God's glory on their wings. And like the voice of many waters, I can hear the angels sing You are holy You are holy You are holy You are holy Ta-da-da 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One last prayer point. Father, take me to a new dimension. There is always more. Lift your voice and pray. Take me to a new dimension. Take me to a new dimension. Ala 
Bradesca Labrando Shabaria da Balanabo. Are you praying? Take me to a new level. Let me not need to tell people that I came before your presence. Let there be an evidence. Let there be a testimony. Nina Kawa Yabo Sarki Salama Nina Kawa Yabo never be the same. I want to pray for you. Listen. I want you to trust God. Please hear me, especially for the visitors here. I want you to trust God that the forces and the yokes that stand between you and your destiny, you have to believe that they will live now. Are we together? I want you to believe God. There are people already receiving their deliverances and miracles. I want to pray for you now. My heart is heavy because in this season and in this time, God wants to set people free. Some of you may not know the causes of the situations, the challenges, the things you go through. You have prayed, you have fasted. God has brought you here tonight and he will give you a dramatic miracle. Are we together now? Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Jesus, the presence of God is Listen, I want to pray for you. I see a writing. I just see a writing in the realm of the spirit. And I see great breakthrough. This is what I see. Great breakthrough. There is a grace that is coming on people now. The Lord is starting off with us tonight. Bringing strange breakthrough to people. I want to pray now. At the count of three. In the name that is above all names. I decree and declare. In the name of the Lord God whose I am. Right now, at the count of three, I release that grace. I command every devil standing on the way to anyone's breakthrough. I command that you leave right now. In the name of Jesus. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. One, two, three. Go now. Go now. Bring them out. Shake it, take it, Inside and outside.
hallelujah lift your hands my god i still see these breakthroughs i'm seeing doors opening in the realm of the spirit listen i'm seeing at least 17 people 17 people i'm going to pray and the power of god will come upon you strange doors opening right now in the name of jesus i declare by the count of three one two three open now open now i command it i declare it now now open doors by the spirit of god open doors open doors my god doors opening over lives opening over destinies opening by the spirit of god by the spirit of god and pray the Lord is showing me people here with strange delays you love God but strange delays I'm seeing like arrows in the spirit and this is not from darkness it will come upon you once it comes upon you know that that delay will end right now in the name of Jesus the Lord is asking me to stretch my hands as I stretch my hands right now in the name of Jesus Lord where are they men and women who have been delayed strangely right now right now right now I command that light and power that light and power ending delays now mighty in this place Mighty in this place, you are mighty in this place. Mighty in this place, you are mighty in our lives. Mighty in our lives, mighty in our I'm seeing something strange in the spirit coming upon sisters. I'm seeing a strange grace for speed. Just sisters, sisters, I'm seeing this. And the Lord is asking me to prophesy it. As soon as I prophesy it, there is a strange unction coming on ladies for strange speed. I see this in the realm of the spirit. Now, Lord, I place the word of God upon this prophecy. And I declare, ladies, step into speed now. Supernatural speed. Run like Elijah. I command it. I decree it. In the name of Jesus. Strength speed. Strength speed. Strength speed. It's coming on you now. Like the dew of heaven. Coming on you now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is opening my eyes to a vision now, and I'm seeing keys being given to people. Keys, listen, keys. It will come on you like fire. I see keys. These keys are solutions and strategies. Solutions and strategies. Solutions and strategies. 
you will help me shout that name Jesus again I see keys being handed over to people according to the grace and mercy of God now Lord I pray that even as you have shown me whoever should be a recipient of this spiritual blessing I decree and declare that it will come upon their lives now are you ready at the count of three get ready now my God my God my God one two three take this kids take this kids so break your tape And the people say, Holy, 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 many of you wonder when you see me do this particular thing where I just mention a state and the Lord begins to touch people from that state it's a sign and wonder you see these things they are operations of the spirit because the Lord is opening my eyes right now I'm seeing a map of Nigeria and I'm seeing the hand of God on south 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 that entire region now now all those who come from that region south 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 a miracle Ending captivities by the Spirit of the Living God. Holy, 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 there is somebody in overflow too you are holding a picture you are holding photos please come overflow too by the roadside let the person come let the person come quickly you are holding a picture the lord is showing me someone please let let that person whoever he is or she is please quickly you are holding a picture run come you are wearing like blue uh, is it blue or black now who is that come Don't worry mama i'm going to pray for you where is your daughter ma no mic i'm looking at you hold on is this her yes, i'm looking at you and the holy spirit is taking me and i'm in kano where is she she's at kano where is she that's what i'm saying she's at kano. and the lord why 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 are you holding her picture is she up there up to now she have made that get married uh -uh. And this, this, day, she's sick. this is what i'm saying this is what god wants to destroy because i'm seeing her in kano and you are standing in for her yes i'm supposed to pray for those outside but i saw this and the lord is saying i should minister to you go and tell her that the lord brings her life this sickness is over <laughs> hallelujah sir where are you coming from Mina, niger state niger state thank the lord because your car would have had an accident on the way coming and the lord has brought you deliverance is this your family yes, sir. this is your family yes, sir. one two three four how many children, four children. have yeah. you stopped giving birth do you think this is all 
I'm looking in a vision and I'm seeing one more, a baby girl. Yes. After this, yes. hold my hand, sir. But the Lord is going to, I'm seeing you have serious problem with finances. Very serious. You are not a lazy man. Even you, you cannot explain how you got into this kind of trouble. But I want to pray for you because the Lord is saying I should release you from this. Hold my hand, sir. I bring you life in the name of Jesus Christ. You will go back and return with a strange this man's life will change like day and night in the name of jesus christ mama please come i don't know this woman but i'm asked to pray for you i look at you in the realm of the spirit and i'm seeing two hands like this you're a woman of prayer this is what i'm seeing in the realm of the spirit look at me ma you love god sincerely but many things are going around they are scattered in your life and you have been asking can god come can god step in even when you were there you were praying that prayer i had you praying and the lord is saying i should tell you he's giving you rest today he's giving you supernatural rest madam please stand up please stand up man please stand up where are you coming from madam it's from sabon gary you are coming hold my hands in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, your life will turn around and that of your family. This is by the Spirit of God, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Have I prayed for you, darling? Come. In the name of Jesus, I end captivity from your life by the power of the Holy Spirit. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I end captivity. Don't worry. I mustn't speak to you. As I lay my hands on you, I want to believe there's someone you are outside your baby is sick run with the person and come now you are outside your baby is sick run with the person and come now that is sir can i pray for you sir i'm going to pray for you and the lord is going to give you peace and the lord is going to raise people to help you now sincerely speaking i want to be honest with you it is not within my power to stop you from getting married i we generally can only advise because you see let me teach you something especially as a pastor there are people who are following us from 45 nations of the world and when you are ministering sensitive things like this um they are listening and every territory has laws are we together now things are a bit flexible in nigeria but if i were in america and i'm talking to this man like this and saying don't marry another wife the son can go and sue me or the ministry so this is the reason why it's not maybe lack of faith are we together sir it is not within my power and i have no rights to judge you i can only declare the counsel of god and pray for you um this is very important when you are speaking to people although by the spirit it is important to be wise in your communication so that you do not say things that will bring you serious problem mama you are praying and you are still telling God there is one more thing you want to tell me. I'm hearing your prayers. Come. What is it? Give her the mic. Is that true? You are standing there and you are praying and you are saying you wish that I can call you again. There is one more issue. What is the issue? Marriage and my daughter's. Your daughter's marriage. Uh, ma Mama, let's, let's pray. If that is the issue. You are a good woman i want to pray for your daughters and god said that's not what you need hold it what you need is destiny help us mama as i'm looking at you now they're about to throw you out of the house because your rent has expired give her the mic is that true yes sir. you need somebody to help you yes sir. seriously yes, sir. if not the time will come even what to eat will become an issue the lord said i should tell you forget this issue of marriage hmm? the major issue is the ministry of destiny helpers Amen. lord send people Amen. you see we must pray that god will grant us grace so that we can help our mothers it's a terrible thing for a woman at this age to be praying as if she never had a child as if she never trained anybody that's why we cause the spirit of delay that makes people to be established very late now according to scripture a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children but sadly being as the situation is we must be able to turn back and be a blessing to these our loved ones a woman like this at her age should not be going around trying to look for food to eat again i pray that your loved ones will not look for food to eat that god himself will empower you and establish you and send you help 
mama don't cry in the name of jesus christ by the power of the holy spirit the lord will help you by the power of the holy spirit in the name of jesus see me after the service madam in jesus name thank you i pray for you sir in the name of jesus may the lord change your life change your situation right now in the name of jesus you are the one with the child please come we're going to pray for the sick now very quickly what's wrong with him he's running temperature this evening just this evening yes sir. but he has been having persistent cough, cough. cough. let's pray for him lord jesus i pray for this your dear son by the anointing of the holy spirit i decree and declare that this boy be made whole right now and for you his mother i command that everything the devil wants to put in your stomach let it leave you right now in the name of jesus christ i pray please why are they here mama come please stand up the lord is visiting you the lord is saying i should tell you he's taking away reproach and pain amen, amen, from your life amen. this is what he's saying please stand up please stand up man that he's rolling away reproach you see as god speaks to one person he's only using one person as a point of contact to speak to everyone it doesn't mean that we have to call you the time will not let that happen are we together now for instance madam are you from kaduna who is from kaduna uh -uh, uh -uh, not just a person a woman there is a mama from kaduna that i want to speak to now this is a young lady now I, I, a, a mama like elderly woman there's a woman who came here from kaduna not a young lady please i i want to just speak to that person very quickly mommy look at me you have gone through so much pain the lord is saying i should tell you it's your children that will wipe your tears it's your children that will wipe your tears may the lord raise them and may they wipe your tears i pray for you in jesus name why is she here you are the deeper life um, lady you are you are a member of deeper life are you sure hold my hands lord jesus i pray that you do a miracle in her life right now put your hand on your stomach god is taking something away from your stomach now i curse it something is leaving you now as i hold your hands you are even surprised even you you would not have known that there's something there i'm seeing like a malignant growth something that will later develop to a fibroid i curse it by the god of heaven right now in the name of jesus christ let it be over now in jesus name come my brother you are james i will pray for all of you but you love jesus you love jesus i have to pray for you come what's your name your name is james do you love jesus i prayed for one boy one miracle service very bad friends and i'm still seeing it again i don't know where that guy is and the lord is asking that we pray for him again you see all these gentlemen you have to be careful it's important for us to be serious with god so that you don't land yourself in the police station hold my hands i pray for you the lord is bringing restoration to your life in the name of jesus christ supernatural restoration sir i pray for you you will not i don't know what is making i'm seeing a thermometer up and down your chest and the lord is saying i should rebuke anything that has to do with your blood pressure in jesus name i command that it leaves you right now by the power of the holy spirit i pray for all of you come sir let me just make contact with you very quickly in the name of jesus christ hasana hasana we're going to pray for the sick now we have to be very fast hasana hasana i'm seeing someone with the name hasana is there someone like that please very quickly hasana whether you're inside outside Hasana from Kogi State. Hasana. Are you not Sado's sister? Is your name Hasana? You are sure? Look at me. The Lord is bringing restoration. Restoration. The Lord is saying I should stretch my hands on you. In the name of Jesus. May you be a benefactor of the mercy of God. The mercy of the living God. 
mercy of the living God. The mercy of the living God. The mercy. Yes, it's all right if your names are Hasana. The mercy of the living God. Your name too? Your name is Hasana. interested in what I'm saying. Hold my hands, my dear. The Lord is bringing breakthrough to your family. There is a spirit that oppresses you and it must leave you now. Go! Now! In the name of Jesus, I curse you by the God of heaven. Let her go. Never to return. In the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> She's afraid already. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. The light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. This lady, you see, she's smiling. But there is a serious case. There is a very mad, wild spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's a reason why I ask her to hold my hands. This lady has been tormented and oppressed in a way that you cannot imagine. Now I command that spirit. This is koinonia. I curse you by the God of heaven. Be gone now. Let her go now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you would see a gentle lady like this and she would not know what is responsible for her life. This doesn't mean she's a devil. It doesn't mean she's possessed. No. It's just the advantage that Satan takes over the lives of people. I command in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you what is wrong with this lady is not a little issue. This thing doesn't show on the face. So you just see people smiling. But they are victims of a lot of things. Let me pray for you, my dear. Come. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring you life now. Life, come. The devil wants to bring pain to your life. Hold my hands. I command it to come to an end now. Pain, repeated cycles of tragedies. I curse it by the God of heaven. An anointing is coming upon you and the Lord himself is giving you a supernatural miracle right now. There are three ladies. I just heard the cry of children. And there are three ladies. You are standing in for your families now. As I'm speaking, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is going to come upon them. Standing in for their families. Standing in for their families. Standing in for their families. Let the oppression in your family end now. This girl's family has gone through all kinds of things. This is Koinonia. I bring you the life and power that is in the name of Jesus. Now, this is what we're going to do. Please listen very carefully. Um, you know that we take out time to minister more specifically to people. I wish that we had all the time, but we have to work with time. And... Um, we are going to pray for the sick now. Please listen. Whether you are inside or outside, if you are trusting God, listen please. Whether you are inside or outside, aside from these particular cases, if you are trusting God for fruitfulness for your loved one or any other person, whether you are inside or outside, please don't come in at random. I want you to come in. I want to minister to you myself. Aside from that, now we are going to pray for the sick. Overflow 1, please all of you should walk to the front of your projector. You will be ministered to. Overflow 2 and the ones extension of overflow 4, please walk to the projector stand outside. Overflow 3, walk to your projector stand outside. Very quickly and those inside here, I want you to just walk out to me very quickly. We are going to minister to people in that order. There are so many people, it has pleased the Lord to make this place a place of supernatural miracles. Please, it, it doesn't matter where you stand. If you are outside, don't come in. Just move to your projector outside. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We are going to minister to you now. It will be very fast. Whilst we are doing that, please, your prayer request. If you've not written your prayer request or that of your loved ones, those online, you're yet to write, do that quickly so that the ushers can follow and then we'll do that very quickly. Every other thing from here will now be the prophetic declarations. There are so many people inside and outside. We are going to pray for the sick. 
the Lord has given us the grace, He's given us the capacity. There are people going through all kinds of things, and um, in as much as we teach you how to live in health and wholeness, we cannot allow the devil buffet you. Some of you are standing in for your loved ones, some of you are standing here with incurable diseases, HIV. You've heard the testimonies. There is nothing that has not been healed in this house, sir. The Lord is going to heal you, you will not die. That virus will not kill you. You hear what I'm saying? I don't mean to embarrass you. I hope you are not embarrassed. Because I look at you. If I don't pray for you, I'm saying very soon, this thing will eat you up. I don't have to say more than that. But you know what I'm talking about. There is no virus. There is no situation that has not been healed in this place. And you know, we don't announce miracles if they are not medically verified. So that it doesn't look like people are just faking things. So believe the Lord, especially if you are here for the first time it doesn't matter who ministers to you i just want you to believe there is a corporate grace that is at work here to minister and bring miracles to people we'll be very fast please those outside you'll be very fast uh pastor jimmy let's see um you handle overflow one outside um pastor alpha overflow two um pastor femi let's see pastor femi and promise go to overflow three mike you walk with a jimmy outside there and then uh have i told you where to go to okay so we'll would go in that order i'm sure that i may just walk alone here there are a number of people who are not here we give those opportunities because it's also an opportunity to train and build people please quickly let's go father we agree that the corporate grace you have released upon this house and this family for miracles let it be released regardless of who ministers we minister in the name of jesus we bring that name that is above all names over every situation let your anointing speak this is the moment oh god where you cure the incurable this is the moment where you step into the lives of people let it be a quick walk let everyone here return with testimonies in jesus name i'm going to begin to minister to you but there's one person here, the anointing of the Spirit will come upon you so strongly. That will be the signal of the grace to minister here right now. This is, uh, don't, don't mind me, I do all my crazy things. Um, let's just walk by the Spirit. Someone here in front, the anointing of the Spirit will come on you in such a mighty way. The moment that happens, then I begin to pray for the sick now. Thank you, Jesus, for your mighty power. That's the person down there, so I can pray for you now. Bless you father thank you all right guys let's give god the very best please you can sit down you can sit down while you are sitting let's be praying because as soon as i'm done praying for the sick we'll address other issues very quickly so that we can finish on time the lord bless you in jesus name Please help them, whether you are an usher or not. New levels. There are people God is fishing out here. New dimensions. Jebros kaparu shabradi salatush. Jebros katabran dega dego shalabradi asha. Engreto susa brigatia. It's a call to your spirit man. It's a call to your spirit man. This is not for everybody. It's a call to your spirit man. If it's your call, you will hear it. 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 You must hear it. If it's your call, you will hear it. Your spirit will pick the signals of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The spirit of prophecy is upon that man. Who can stand against the Lord?
praying on the request is not a ritual it's not a ritual no but listen brothers and sisters we bring this prayer request before the God of heaven representing the pain of people representing the mockery of darkness and you've seen all sorts of miracles that has come from here and we're going to pray now the Lord is asking me to take off my shoes we're going to pray right now please I want you to participate I take time to explain this so that we all understand um, I may not be able to minister to everybody one by one but this is a representation of the cry and the request of people the other people are ministering to those outside don't worry those outside if they are still ministering to you just hang on those who um, have been ministered to already please just follow your screen can we stretch our hands in one minute and I'd like you to just pray in the spirit pray in the spirit to the God of heaven who answers prayers Jesus Jesus the son of the living God Zebra Kato Salabranda Gadabash Mali Brando Zebra Gadash. Now arise, O Lord, come to your resting place. Brood upon these requests. Let there be mighty, mighty, mighty miracles. Mighty miracles. Jesus Christ I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that every request here represented tonight is turned into a testimony it's turned into a testimony in the name of Jesus the son of the living God every request here no matter how impossible is turned into strange and speedy testimonies in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that for every request you have written here and all the ones online I release my faith and in the name of Jesus I declare let this be the last time you will submit this request the last time you will submit this request let this be the last time you will submit this request unto him that answers prayers the one who has beckoned on us to approach his throne without fear to approach with boldness and confidence we decree and declare in the name of jesus most high the son of the living god every request here i say again is turned into a testimony in the name of jesus turned into a testimony by the power of the Holy Spirit turned into a testimony by the power of the Holy Spirit turned into a testimony hallelujah this is the last phase of the meeting I want to pray and prophesy upon your life it will never tire me to say this in my opinion 
the greatest part of this service is what is about to happen now because believers are used to charismatism falling down rolling and so on and so forth we many times downplay the place of prophecy prophecy is very powerful and have taught us that there are two dimensions to the operation of the prophetic there is the revelatory dimension of the prophetic that God allows by his spirit to bring comfort to bring access to light and information that works hand in hand with the gift of the word of knowledge but the greater and more superior dimension of the prophetic is the creative dimension of prophecy where the word of God makes realities that have no business happening to happen the word creates a scene and adds it to the pages of your life so that something you had no business walking in you will all of a sudden find yourself walking in it and remember I told us the last discussion before we began to pray that one of the greatest reasons why people are limited is because of inadequate dimension of the anointing so alongside this prayer I'm going to be praying a prayer of impartation there are people th this thing is not just for showmanship listen if you know God and you love him and you see the needs of people you will covet the unction and the grace of God this has nothing to do with showmanship when people begin to make showmanship out of it is is inaccurately used hallelujah let's correct things now let's recreate things now please lift your hands I want to pray for you oh come oh come me man and run some captivities why yeah oh come oh come Emmanuel and run some captivities why yeah rejoice rejoice For Emmanuel has come to us, his Israel. In the name that is above all names, I decree and declare right now, every door that has been closed over anyone here, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, I command that door be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. The Bible says, Have you heard of this saying? that a city gives birth in one day but he said as soon as zion travails he says she shall give birth a son i decree and declare whatever you have been incubating for a long time revealed to you by the spirit but yet to manifest there is grace for performance and i command that you must have a manifestation now i decree it i declare it by the power of the holy ghost manifested blessings Manifested miracles. Hallelujah. I decree and declare where you have to struggle for everything, labor for everything, I open you up to a dimension of prepared blessings. I open you up to a dimension of prepared blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know who has despised the grace of God upon your life. He said, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. I prophesy to you, may an unction come upon your life tonight that will distinguish you. I decree it, I declare it. May an unction come upon your life tonight that distinguishes you in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Elijah told Ahab, saddle your ass and run. For I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. And Ahab was already light years ahead of Elijah. 
but the Bible says the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and all of a sudden he started running on barefoot listen the Bible says that the disciples were six hours ahead of Jesus moving on their boat and Jesus got up and started walking on water there are many of you there are several things that have limited your pace I want to prophesy speed for you there is a grace that makes men to pursue to overtake to recover I speak to you in the name of Jesus as I pray for you the anointing of God will come on some of you and you will want to run physically please hold them I release that grace that grace for speed receive that grace now no delay I command speed speed of accomplishment speed of accomplishment in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah Isaiah 6 he says arise shine for your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you it says for darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people it says but upon you the glory of the Lord shall arise verse 3 says Gentiles you won't look for them again Gentiles shall come to your light and even their arrogant kings to the brightness of your rising it says where you have been deserted so that no man passes through you I will make you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations I decree and declare from today every gift you have every dream every ability that is dormant and not being blessed and rewarded I command Gentiles to come to your light now. I command Gentiles to come to your light, to come to your business, to come to your profession, to come to your ministry. I make it so by the Spirit of the Living God. hallelujah and David said is there any man of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness and they went to bring a crippled man called Mephibosheth and when he came he sat down with David and he says you will continue to dine with me here in the name of Jesus where your strength cannot take you Satos where your current level of achievement cannot take you I decree and declare may the hand of God that picks a man from a dunghill to a place of prominence may that hand pick you to the next level of your life may that hand pick you to the next level of your life hallelujah it says and I will restore to you the years alas master for it was borrowed they borrowed an axe head and it fell double trouble and he said no don't worry where fell it I want to speak to people here who have lost things you have lost relationships you have lost money you have lost opportunities there is a system in the kingdom where they can call back things he said they are taken for a prey and none say it restore in the name of Jesus by the name of he who can manipulate time and make yesterday become tomorrow and tomorrow become yesterday I command a restoration now I command a restoration now I command Hear me anyone here called jobless you are looking for a job or any of your loved ones in the parable that Jesus gave he saw some people sitting idle he said why sitest thou idle he said no man employ us and he said go to the vineyard when he speaks there is always a job in the name of Jesus I create a space for you now in the name of the Lord Jesus I create a space for you now I speak anyone here or anyone standing for any family that has had delay especially in the area of fruitfulness Jesus said 
he said be fruitful the first command he gave man right now in the name of jesus hear me mary said how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man he didn't say joseph will come he said the power of the highest shall overshadow you therefore i prophesy everything that represents unfruitfulness it dies now in the name of jesus it dies now in the name of jesus i speak to everyone God body. carry your children now carry your children now every aspect of your life that represents barrenness be it in the works of your hands be it in your finances in the name of jesus the son of the living god i command supernatural results supernatural results supernatural results i pray for those who wrote jam and didn't like their results i change the result now hallelujah every family here that has refused to move forward i don't care for what reason in the name that is above all names your accomplishment for the next one month will dwarf what you have done in the last five years in the name of jesus believe it help them please believe it in the name of jesus Hallelujah. This is one of my favorite blessings to people. The ministry of destiny help us. I discovered, brothers and sisters, hear me, that it always flows from God through men. Everything money can buy, relationships can buy it. There are needless battles, needless battles that relationships can solve. The distance between you and the next testimony may just be a relationship but you see no destiny helper comes by his by himself they are called they are called they never come by themselves they do not even know he says the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon in the name of Jesus whoever must speak for you in high places in this season whoever must endorse the testimony of God upon your life as a man of God as a businessman whoever must advocate for you where your voice cannot reach I prophesy to the north I prophesy to the south I prophesy to the east and west wherever your destiny helpers are I command them to come into your life now hallelujah listen I know a woman years ago when we held our crusade in 2009 in Abuja it was her camp that we used she's not even educated but she had access to two people a very wealthy family that needed a miracle and she prayed for them and they became destiny helpers let me tell you something the easiest way to be wealthy is through relationships somebody can get up by the spirit and make you a partaker of his blessings are we together now we've discussed on finances and all the principles but brothers and sisters there is a dimension of speed that god can give a man and this is to help you be established fast so that you can focus on the purposes of the kingdom there is this spirit that makes people to be established so late it's not that they are lazy you cannot be established over 100,000 per month. Believe me. You cannot be established over 50,000 per month. You are too generous to even keep that money. And whilst you give, God will orchestrate men, but we have learned that Satan can hinder them. I'm praying specifically for finances. I want to invoke the mystery of divine supply. There is such a reality like supernatural provision. This ministry is a, is a tearsome testimony of what happens when men covenant with themselves to make sure you rise he said men came to david in the cave of adulon enter the covenant with themselves that they must make him king you don't need plenty people you just need one person anointed and directed wherever your financial helper is 
in the name that is above all names i declare that between now and the next two weeks of june may they appear in your life may they appear in your life may they appear in your life hallelujah every dying business here every dying career every dying ministry that is as though you are not called i give life to that which is dying now i give life to that which is dying now hallelujah father it is my prayer from my heart for your people that by miracle service june you will return here 10 times better literally 10 times better hallelujah please lift your hands i want to release something there are people here you love god i gave you an example of this anointing there needs to be an upgrade you see the thing with the anointing is if it is there it is there if it is not there it is not there it's as simple as that the anointing is a very obvious quality of god it's not something you struggle to see there are many of us especially pastors we are trusting God for certain dimensions of grace. It can manifest as anything. Wisdom, strategies, supernatural grace, the grace for performance. I want to pray for you. Activations are very necessary to drive people into great results. I stretch my hands right now. In the name of Jesus, every dimension of the anointing that is available in this house every dimension from prophetic dimensions Jabo Sikata there are people receiving it now there are others is being activated others is being multiplied in the name of Jesus I open you up now strange levels of the prophetic strange levels the eyes that see and the ears that hear the impulses of the spirit I pray right now the manifestation of the spirit of revelation receive it right now revelation inside 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 take it now take it now revelation revelation into the mysteries of the kingdom hallelujah every operation of the gift of the spirit that is barren in your life are needed for your destiny i stretch my hands and i activate it now receive it right now i activate it now i activate it now i activate it now by the power of the holy spirit i release upon you right now fresh mantle for leadership supernatural dimension of the leadership grace let it come upon you you may be weak but it will distinguish you in the name of Jesus Christ. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. It is he that giveth thee power. Brothers and sisters, there is such a thing called the power, the anointing, the unction, the capacity to create an atmosphere around you that attracts wealth. I don't know how many people it will please the Lord to release this grace but I stretch my hands let it please the God of heaven to bring men into this dimension right now receive it now the power to prosper the power to prosper you may be weak but the power to prosper bring in favor the ministry of men into your life hallelujah I don't know what has brought your prayer life down but right now in the name of Jesus fresh fire upon your altar fresh fire upon your altar capacity to pray in the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ hear me whoever fights you goes down instantly I say it again whoever fights you whether in the secret or the open goes down instantly It says you shall call 
on Aaron and his sons. He said, and you shall take your honor and give it. Honor is a mantle. It's transferable. Let me tell you, this thing called honor is not about accomplishment. There is a grace that makes people distinguished. I pray for you from today. That grace for honor, I release it upon your life. May you be honored at the gates of your destiny. May you be strangely honored at the gates of your destiny. Whoever has said over his dead body for you to move forward, tonight may their prayers be answered. Yes. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points and we're done. I pray for your family. We believe in family in this place. No matter how lifted you are, if your family is not lifted, he said, as for me and my house, we believe in family. We pray for our children, whether in the womb or born. We pray. I prophesy over every family here that the devil is trying to corrupt the testimony of God's faithfulness. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, supernatural lifting for every family. 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 And finally, I pray for you. In a way you have never seen, whoever looks at your face, I compel them to favor you. Listen, the Bible says, Esther found favor on everyone that looked at her. For as long as you made contact with Esther and you looked at her face, you were compelled by an anointing. Believe me, I have seen this thing work in my life. I prophesy to you, men who have no business blessing you as they look at you, I compel it from their spirit. May they bless and favor you. May they bless and favor you. May they bless and favor you. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. We're rounding up, but the Lord is giving me a word here. The Lord is speaking to a family here. And he's saying, I should tell you, it will be like a dream. When in three weeks, it will change your life. It will be like a dream. 21 days in three weeks, he will change your life. Whoever this is for, I release it to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is also speaking to one person. You are going to start a business next month on the 5th. And I'm seeing before 31st, it has made you a millionaire. In the name of Jesus. I'm not motivating you. I'm speaking as the Spirit is giving me unction. You don't believe it, you will never see it. Never, ever see it. Every difficulty you came here with, in the name of Jesus, you leave it down here and walk back free. In the name of Jesus. Quickly, in one minute, everyone still standing. I want to make two altar calls now, very quickly. The first, please keep standing, everybody. No moving around, inside, outside, please. There are people here, men and women, who you have seen the things that the Lord has done by His Spirit. Please, let's keep standing to honor them. And whilst you watch the power of God move, the Holy Spirit began to convict you that you need to belong to this family of faith, the family of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are saying, man of God, if you will pray for me, I'm ready to completely surrender my heart to Jesus. I don't care how many times you have come out in response to an altar call. The second category of people who will join them are those who at one time you have made commitments for the Lord Jesus Christ, but you have found yourself derailing in many ways and you're saying, man of God, if you will lead me, I will run. I will run. Run to Jesus. Now, these two categories of people, I know there are people outside overflow. One, two, three, wherever you are, please, our time is gone. I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain. I'm going to count five. 
wherever you are leave your seat and run now please clear the way for them one quickly quickly let's honor them as they come quickly run to jesus now please quickly inside outside young and old quickly quickly i have decided to follow jesus no turning back run to jesus no turning Please keep coming don't sit back there now look at me brothers and sisters i appreciate you for this great decision you have made the bible says as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away when you come to him he has the power to make you you have no ability to change yourself but you have the willingness to hand over your life i want to pray for you listen i don't want you to just recite this as a poem i want you to mean it from the depth of your heart standing before jesus the firstborn among we the begotten and his holy church i want you to make this confession from the depth of your heart lift your right hand as a symbol of surrender and say after me lord jesus say it again lord jesus i believe in you that you died for me you shed your blood for me you rose again for me tonight I willingly receive your life into my spirit I declare with my mouth the Lord Jesus and I confess with my heart that God raised him from the dead I declare right now that eternal life is mine I receive it into my spirit I'm free from the power of sin the flesh and Satan from today I move forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus keep your hands lifted I pray for you spirit of the living God you represent the presence of Jesus now in the name of Jesus Christ I'm praying in a very supernatural way spirit of the living God by the power of the Holy Spirit let these ones never be the same again in the name of Jesus Christ may they never be the same again I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that their lives will be objects of praise in the name of Jesus I declare your sins forgiven I declare a new life for you I break away from you every influence of darkness capable of jeopardizing the quality of God's life in you I release you to be victorious I make you victorious by the power that is in the name of Jesus hallelujah praise the Lord thank you for this great decision now I want you to follow the lady waving her hands they would um, lead you outside have a few details and then um, just communicate a few things to you please cooperate with them the Lord bless you I love you and congratulations very quickly please guide them guide them very quickly let's do this hello scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs it says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. 
and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you